So tell me, did you sail across the sun? Did you make it to the Milky Way and see the lights all faded and the heaven is overrated? Tell me, did you fall for a shooting star? One without a permanent scar and did you miss me while you were looking for yourself out there? What's up everybody and welcome to Radio CCP. Home for your smooth, soft rock, and alternative covers. No, but seriously, welcome to another episode of the Channel Chasers Podcast. I'm, of course, your host, Jay, and joining me, as always, are my buddies, Brian and Tony. How are you doing tonight, boys? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> hey, people. You know, if I was able to actually, like, play the guitar, I would actually be strumming along, but I can't. Also, don't have my guitar. It, 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 took, it took me years to learn. It took me years to learn. There was actually a really nice, uh, there was actually a really nice music teacher that had a, a son who had the uh, same disability as me. And so she actually knew, like, a, a trick to, to help me learn. It was nice. Um... Nice. I tried to learn the bass guitar, but uh, I haven't. I haven't busted it out in years. It's sitting at the top of my closet, in the case, just because like I had this whole like Jesse esque kind of phase where like in college I do like these coffee shop open mics and shit. No, oh, really. I like right. Jesse. You have better. You had better material. Yeah. I, I, and also, I wouldn't do parody songs where I shit on, you know, my peers. But we'll get into that later. Um, okay. My brain went to a different Jesse. Oh, which Jesse were you talking about? Uncle Jesse. Oh, yeah, duh. No, I was talking about Jesse from the show that we are about to talk about, which is... How I Met Your Father, the spin-off series to the beloved classic adult comedy, How I Met Your Mother. Uh, which, this is actually a first for the panel. Like, you know how usually if you're, you know, you're a longtime listener of the podcast or watcher of the show, that usually it's like, you know, one of us is like the super fan, super invested in the property, while the others are either like, in the middle or haven't seen or you know experienced anything with a particular property this time all three of us are big fans of the original and like are equally invested so again this yeah. is the first for the panel. Oh, i will say mm -hmm. though i will say for me particularly i have not uh seen the finale of uh, how i met your father i mean mother did mother, you see, mother but did you but did you watch the real one the one that counts the alternate ending. The alternate no. ending is the one that counts. Oh yeah, so my so my cousin my cousin had my cousin has it on uh like on Blu-ray because that, that that's his like default comfort show. He'd like watch it before he goes to uh, watch watch it before he goes to sleep. Just throw on a random episode. I'm pretty sure you can find the alternate ending on YouTube. But uh, yeah. That's the one I. That's the one in my head canon is the, is the actual ending to the show, but you know that's neither here nor there. We're not actually going to do an episode on how I met your mother. Uh, that would be a super long one yeah. with, with way more rants. But don't worry, there's going to be rants in this one. That's right, long time viewers. We're getting a classic J rant in this bitch because I got words. I got nice. words to say. Yeah, and, nice. and uh. With my words, mm -hmm. I I, and, ha I have definitely a lot of words for these characters for sure. And uh, I just want to say something. Uh huh. That I just googled about how I met your father, mm -hmm. which is going to make soon make more sense as we go along. Uh, the creators aren't the creators of uh, How I Met Your Mother. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Uh, they're the they're the creators of. Uh, Another spinoff, a show that was a spinoff of a different popular thing, uh, Love, Victor. Oh, shit, really? That makes a lot of sense. And they also worked 
together on This Is Us. <gasps> that makes even more sense! Oh, man. So, like... Uh, heads up for, again, any long-time viewers of the channel, you know, back when I used to do This Is Us reviews, uh, these rants are going to be very similar to the ones that I had in some of my This Is Us, uh, like, episode reviews, uh, in, like, I think it was season five with the last season I covered, because I went inactive during the last two seasons. I actually binge watched the final season recently. I cried like a bitch. I cried like the bitchiest of yeah. bitches. Jay at one point was like, Hey, do you want to cover this for the channel? And he's like, Oh, right, shit, you're behind like four seasons. I don't want to put you through that. Because that's definitely one show that is kind of hard to marathon. I was going to say, I also just don't want to put your tear ducts through that much overtime. Because, like, no joke, like, me and, um, me and, um, my, uh, my ex, like, had this ongoing joke of, oh, it's the last ten minutes, it's time to cry. <laughs> because it was, like, clockwork for that show, dude. Oh, man, so good. Oh, yeah. But, uh, no, the, the topic isn't This Is Us. We're talking about How I Met Your Father. But before we get into talking about How I Met Your Father, of course, we got to talk about the original, How I Met Your Mother, and kind of our overall feelings about that. Tony, we'll start with you, then we'll go to Brian, yeah. and then I'll cap it off. Okay, well, I thought that the, uh, the original was a great... Uh, great sitcom it was my uh friends same. It definitely was same and it's like okay so for the folks at home i was raised on the entirety of friends because my mom would always collect uh the dvds also for... same same so it it was a thing that i would marathon with my mom the show from beginning to end. You know, it's funny. So, uh, my aunt, uh, it, who was like my primary babysitter as a kid, because like, you know, uh, my, my mom was at work, my dad was deployed and she was in college at the time when I was like little, like, so a lot of the times when she babysat me, uh, part of that babysitting was just sitting there and watching the new episode of friends. Oh God, I feel old. Because <laughs> I remember as a kid, I remember as a kid, not a baby, but as a kid, uh, eating dinner with the family, watching Friends. I mean, I live. wasn't a baby. I was like six or seven. You said baby. I said kid. Oh. I said right. part of that babysitting. I said babysitting. I hear you. Being, being babysat Ignore doesn't me. mean you're a baby. Move on. Okay. <laughs> anyway, back to Tony. The point is, man, uh, when oh. we're watching this show, I just kind of like, I like these characters. They're just, their dynamics are great. And as the show went on, why are these people so damn stupid? It, yep. Why don't they just not talk do like people? Some that they did but overall they're like okay don't get me started on the whiplash that Ted and Robin put me through oh never, my god yes. never, yeah uh, oh. never again never forget never forget progenitor will they won't they couples oh no 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 brian i know the progenitor won't they will they won't they couples that fucking, was yeah. ross. fucking ross and rachel yeah no, no yeah no. both are very frustrating y'all had to start this cancer of no what no 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 the rant, that ranch for later that ranch for later mm -mm. keep it keep it on the cap woosa woosa Practice your breathing. Also, also, I loved the Lily and Marsh relationship. That marriage was so wholesome, so beautiful. Just they were the everyone. absolute best. Oh my god! Yeah, simply 
divine, just great. And they but, weren't just like sugar cookie; they were real. Yeah, no, they, they had their were. issues. Like, it was cool. But also, the cast was fantastic. I knew a lot of them from previous shows and films. They did an amazing job. I mean, overall. that's what, I mean, that's why when you know Avengers came around and we see Maria Hill, I'm like, oh no, why did they why did they cast Robin as that bitch? Now I'm gonna have to hate you more than I did after all the bullshit you put me through. And then but we then, found out they altered Maria. Yeah, where she's not the same bitch she was in the comics. Thank goodness. Well, there's a special word that I have for Maria Hill, but I can't say that on air. No, you cannot. Uh, we, we intend to monetize these no. episodes in the future. So. so that's Maybe if we were broadcasting in Australia? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That would be a different thing entirely, Brian. But one, we are not Australian. Yep. And two, I just have a little bit more decorum for the most part at this at this point in my life. Okay, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad he ad- I'm glad he added those uh, asterisks to that. Otherwise, I would have got on his ass for that. Also, folks, very similar to the Unicorn episode, this episode is probably going to be, like, uncut and unfiltered because we're going to get really real here. So there are going to be tangents and shit, but they're related because of how this show is to us. So it's going to be a long one. Grab your snacks, grab a drink. This may be even longer than our yeah. usual, like, three-hour length podcast, so, uh, Although, s- last down. time we said that, last time we said that, it was only, like, ten minutes over, so you never know. Yeah, you never know, but the the, yeah, rant, the but... rants will definitely extend it, let me tell you. I got, I got lots to say. Me too. Me too. But, for How I Met Your Mother, even though I thought the last season was uh, hot ass uh, say it say it you can say it it was hot ass no it's not even hot ass it was uh, i mean that it, too words to describe it not it's like when you no. watch a show for so long was, look just, i i I, ha- I have the perfect analogy for it like it was the parent effect I was like, damn it, how I met your mother. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah. No, I want to go a yeah. step further. Okay, at least for me. And I was like, disappointed grandparent. Oh, no. That's, the, yeah, that's pretty no. huge. I was like, so you, what you're telling me, Chuck, is that you... Pulled me around with all these different shenanigans, made me fall in love with these characters, only at the end of the road. You did this to... How dare I? you? I said like, good... <laughs> good day, good sir. I said good day. I mean, I mean, you know a show is kind of uh, wonky when all of a sudden they decide, hey, we're going to break our normal format. Yeah, yeah. Mhm, mhm. Uh, but mm-hmm. overall, love the original show. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like, like removing some of the more cancerous and disappointing. I'll say disappointing aspects. I love the show. Yep, yep, yep. Couldn't agree more. Brian, how about you? Yep. Similar thing. Grew up... Grew up uh, watching it and uh, friends. And... Honestly, another one of the big shows that was for me growing up, at least. Along with friends. Because there were two big ones uh, growing up. And that was uh, friends and... uh, Buffy, which is kind of funny because Willow. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. That is funny. 
But uh, but yeah. So then, how I met your mother came on and watched it live as much as I could, and then didn't watch the last. It stopped midway in the last season because it's just like, no, we can't watch this. Even the family was like, nope. Which is sad too because they actually show you the mother, and she's a really cool character and a really cool yeah. like. Right. Yin to oh my Ted's god. Yang. Oh my god. That's why, dude, yes. I'm telling you, Brian, yes. that's why the alternate ending is my head cannon. Okay. But uh, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. But, uh... Because uh, the ending we got was, uh, they said in the uh, they said in the commentary that the ending we got was uh, ma uh, network mandated. As and well, they, they as, also yeah. said. They wrote it while they were planning, while they were still doing season two, yeah. Yeah. Well, Network... But, uh, and... You can yeah, try. It's because... Sorry, Brian. It's okay. I was just going to say, because the thing that you got to keep in mind is How I Met Your Mother ran for, like, seven seasons. Yep, it was so seven. So by the end of it, Jason Siegel's career was popping off. All the different stars were starting to pop off. Which, and... small tangent, like, why why haven't we gotten more Muppets movies? Jason Segel was amazing in that Muppets um, movie. They did uh, just release a Muppets TV show. Is he in that? Nope. He should be. It's, he was great. It's a, um, it's a, um... One that's focused on the band. Oh, I, because I, I, I remember watching like the, the, the one that they had on ABC where it was like, kind of a like mockumentary Saturday Night Live style kind of thing, very similar to the original Muppet Show but more like updated. Uh, it was funny. Oh. It was funny. We found we I, found, I didn't. We found out uh, Kermit Hallpass was Leah Michelle. And then Leah Michelle got into, <laughs> got into an elevator with uh with Kermit, and Kermit just froze. <laughs> oh, oh damn! She was like, "Oh but... Kermit, I loved you. I love your work." And he's just like, "Uh, uh, 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 uh um." Yeah, uh, but the show, the the band show, it was just about like them trying to make it as a band, and. Featured a lot of celebrities playing altered versions of themselves. Animal's my guy, so um, I think I might check that out. The only... Well, see, here's the thing is, I hadn't seen it, so I can't say for sure whether or not it's good or bad. But uh, from what I know, the only, like, reoccurring character who's actually playing a character... Recurring actor who's playing a, like, character is uh, Lily Singh. Ew. Never mind. Uh... But, uh, anyway, so, yeah, uh, and I will say that, uh, you know how you have, like, your comfort shows? Yep. Especially when you're neurospicy. Yep. And you rewatch them constantly. Like I um, said, that was the, me, How I Met Your Mother for My Cousin. For me, for me, the number one was, for a long time, Friends. But like a number two or number three was uh, how I met your mother. Um. Okay. Well, I guess we'll pass it on to me. Uh, if you guys are curious, my comfort show was always Fresh Prince of Bel Air, because like even though it used Makes to come sense. on around ten o'clock, like my mom would let me stay up and we'd watch it together. Uh, so you know, I have a lot of really fond memories of uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air because like that was just how I spent time with my mom. Uh, but with how I met your how I met your mother. This show, in my opinion, is a classic, despite how much I hate, mm -hmm. like, the, some of the later seasons, in particular the last one. But yeah. this show is a classic. Uh, I've said it multiple times, and actually multiple people have pointed it out to me, and I've just been like, I know. Uh, Barney is my spirit animal. <laughs> and, yes. like, you know, when I was watching the show, I was like, okay, this is the kind... I'll, it's like, oh my god, this is the kind of guy that I'm going to grow up to be. I should stop myself from doing that. I didn't stop myself from doing that. Granted, nowhere yeah. near as extreme. I am not a sexual harasser. But, 
No. I uh, I did have a um, well. Okay, can't you can't say that on YouTube anymore. You, I had a very overactive drive. I guess is the appropriate yeah. wording for it. Yeah, and uh, to no one's surprise, it was never as intense as that. But I was told a couple times that uh, I am a uh, single marshal. You'll find your lily eventually. Don't worry about it. Uh, exactly. Takes time for everyone, homie. But yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's a classic. Uh, you know, very much like Tony said, the last season was... Uh, but I I love it. Yeah, it meant a lot to me. And uh, so that's why I was hesitant at first to watch How I Met Your... Uh, How I Met Your Father. But then, like, after I saw the trailer well i was hesitant to watch it when it was announced i was like i'm not checking that out that's just a that's just a cash grab and i was like oh wait it's not um, on a network anymore it's on hulu hmm it stars hillary Duff. actually hmm. um actually fun fact the story doesn't start there oh whoa yeah because the story starts actually way back uh when uh like how I met your mother was ending. Oh, oh yeah, because uh, they wanted to do uh, how I met your dad, which uh, the first incarnation of it was going to be starring uh, Christina, um, something with an M. She actually Christina played the Milian? mother on How I Met. No, no, no. Oh, you talking about you talking about like Ted's wife. Yeah, yeah, Ted's wife. Uh -huh. The mother on How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, yeah. It was actually going to star that actress and like tell the story of how she got to that point. Oh, from her perspective? I would have watched that. I would have watched yeah. that too. In but, fact, we would learn more about her. Which... But the studio passed on that. Ooh. and then, And then they wanted to do a completely new one called uh, called How I Met Your Dad. Where they actually filmed the pilot for it, and it starred a uh, Barbie director Greta Gerwin. Huh. Hmm. And uh, Meg Ryan was actually brought in to play the uh, the older version. Whoa, huh. that's a pretty big get. I mean, I know she's not as big as she used to be, but like, you know, if you grew up in the '90s, you couldn't escape Meg Ryan. But mm -hmm. the weird thing is, is I saw a trailer for the pilot. Mm -hmm. What? And it's weird because she's not telling the kids, like, to their face. She's writing it on a typewriter. What the fuck? And also, when the show starts, she's married. The younger version of her is married, but to a different guy who isn't the dad. Hmm. I mean, it's got a couple familiar faces here and there, but it just didn't have the same vibe. It may have if the studio had ran with it, but they decided not to, so they put it on shelf for a while. And then we have to talk about something that's kind of a little bit of a backstory for this show, mm -hmm. but has nothing to do with the show. Because I don't think we would have had this if not for the Lizzie McGuire. Oh yeah, the fact that the Lizzie Mag the fact that the Lizzie McGuire revival got axed by Disney because. Um, Hillary was like, "All right, I'll do it, but here's my condition." Uh, no, she's, she's like, you know, no offense to Raven and all that, uh, but I'm not gonna make it like a Raven's home. This isn't gonna be a kids show. It's going to be this time about the parents. It's gonna be about Lizzie and Gordo, Miranda, and whoever Miranda ends up with, you know, adult Matt, stuff like that, and it, it's going to be a more like, you know. Not drama, but like a dramedy about these parents trying to figure out their lives. And and that's also what the creator wanted. Yep. And they actually filmed a pilot for mm -hmm. it. And it's just like, you know, we wanted to curse. We wanted to, you know, and it, it's not the, it, and she was, you know, she's, uh, you know, explained in interviews. It's like, we wanted to curse and all that stuff. It's like, not because we wanted the show to be edgy, but because like, there aren't any parents in real life that don't curse 
So it it would just feel oh, yeah. like inauthentic. And, but then Disney was like, well, we're Disney, so we can't allow that. That's too unclean for our branding. So pass. So then yeah. it was about to go on to Hulu, but then for some reason Hulu dropped it. And then, you know, here we are with How I Met Your Father. She ended up getting a role anyway. Well, also, you know the mouse and how they work sometimes. They're a little too uh, greedy with their properties. Yeah. Uh, also, funny enough, this ties up. Uh, this ties into a conversation we had. Uh, was it the last episode we recorded? Was it in the Unicorn episode? Or maybe it was the episode before. I don't remember. Any keen-eared listener or keen-eyed watcher can tell us in the comments uh, which episode it was. But... One of the episodes we did recently, uh, Brian brought up like a who was your childhood crush? Who was your first childhood crush? I remember, and he, you know, he mentioned Hillary Duff and Amy Jo Johnson. I also mentioned Hillary Duff, and then you know, t- uh, Tony was like, "She's meh." So like, it's it's funny that like you know we mentioned that like me and Brian both having a crush on her in childhood, and then. She comes, uh, we, we're doing a show where she comes back in this, so it's just oh, yeah. funny how that works. Oh, yeah, all right. And I mean, he's pretty, but the character she plays just that's a hard no. Well, back in the uh, um, Lazy McGuire days, she was. Like an adorable character. I mean, also, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. This is going to sound narcissistic as hell, but like, Sophie, Sophie is, Sophie is a me. Sophie is definitely a me. Like, a, yeah, a, a good majority of Sophie is a me. And you know what? I, I I'm not Val. afraid to say it. I'm not afraid to say it. I date me. <laughs> To be fair, if I ever was in the position where I, I had to have a moment where I dated myself, it would be too toxic. I would get on my own nerves. Yeah, I don't know if I can handle that can of worms of dating myself. Maybe I'm just a narcissist. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's just also, um, I think it's we're more self-aware of our negatives and Realize that we can't deal with that in a partner. Ah. And, uh, and it, it's uh, funny because I'll get this into screen time because of some things I read. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Brian, I think you and I have the up and up on that, like looking more inward department. I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like I'm very introspective. Oh. Uh, after I kind of explain what I read in the uh, these articles, you, I think you'd be very interesting just from a different perspective, you know? Okay. Okay. I was going to say, I, I, what, are y'all trying to say I'm not self-aware? I am plenty self-aware. <laughs> my, actually, like, what, my, uh, like, you know, real talk, I guess the beginning of real talk, my therapist actually mentions that as a compliment all the time. She's like, wow, you actually really know the causes of all your problems and are actively making efforts to change that. Okay, so I yeah. might as well just uh, get it off my uh, chest because I decided to do a little bit of uh, digging mm-hmm. into uh, what makes people on the autism spectrum and neurodivergent people a little bit different than neurotypical people. Okay. So I went down a bit of a small rabbit hole and I learned that through various different studies, that uh, people who are on the spectrum and people who are neurodivergent typically uh, ten- have a tendency of when they close their eyes and kind of just tune everything out, they kind of go inward more. Yeah. And then they kind of look at the more logistical problems of themselves and some of the things around them. Yeah. I mean, and- you know, as a neurodivergent person, I agree. I do that. I mean, that's why. That's why, like, I, yeah. I really related to uh, the mo- one moment in the show where, like, they, they take away the phones, and then, mm-hmm. like, uh, you oh, know, it's yeah. a cell phone free day, and they're like, you know, well, so what are we gonna do? And he's like, just sit. We're just gonna sit here. 
alone with our thoughts. And he goes, and Charlie says, but I hate being alone with my thoughts. I'm like, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like, okay. Oh, no. Here they come. Oh, man. And here's something also I learned very interestingly going down, continuing down that rabbit hole. And it led to me to an article that said, do autistic people lack empathy? Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I haven't really heard that before. I've been told that I could, I'm, I can't relate to people. Maybe that's it. So I read, I read that thing. And here's what I found out. Some of the things that really are pointed out to me that typically no, not all are autistic people lack empathy. It's due to various different factors. Like sometimes it's uh, the way a person was raised or it's adding on another condition called, I think it's Alex, Alex Mafia. I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, it's a condition where it, it kind of prohibits empathy. I was going to say, don't I, I was going to say, don't look at me. I didn't go past undergrad. <laughs> I mean, I only had one semester. It's just something that I found interesting because it's also me trying to remember what this article said. So, forgive me. It is interesting. No, like, you know, ladies and gentlemen at home, like, you might have thought that that was a tangent, but that's actually very related to what we're going to talk about over the course of, uh, like, discussing how I met your father. And yeah, you had to pause oh, there, didn't you? You almost made I almost, that mistake too. I, yeah, I almost said mother. I almost said mother. I will admit, I'm so used <laughs> to saying mother that I have to be like, no, it's father. Remember, it's father. But yeah, think like much. Well, these two guys, these are my closest and best friends, even though they're like miles apart from me. Oh, you know? same buddy. But yeah, I vote. These guys always tell me when I am a complete idiot. Hundred percent. That's what real friends do. Same yeah, you do it for me too. And there are times when I'm like, I try my best to relate to everyone in my life. I'm like, are they doing okay? Are they mad? Are they happy? Because I can't mm -hmm. really tell. So. But when I watch a show like this, it, it, it makes me think, holy shit, I have it easy compared to whatever the fuck was going on there. And then parts of the show that we'll get into, I was like actively saying, no, 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 you Same. are not. You are not. Good job reeling it back. Huh. Yep. <laughs> nice save. Nice save. But it was like, it was those moments where I'm like, oh my god, I actually do feel some form of empathy. I am not a robot. <laughs> yep. All right. So like to to relate to relate to me like combining this with initial thoughts i like i know we said we're going to brian but like i i, I feel like this can piggy uh, piggyback off real well considering where tony left off on his thing um these guys can tell you like i'm the therapist friend not just because of the whole like went to school for psych and like one of, one of my like yeah. one of my things uh that like i i've been a lot more open about with my with my friend group is like yo I love being able to help you guys, but sometimes y'all just y'all need to ask me if I'm okay, because like nobody asked me if I'm yeah. okay, and like that yeah. was very much Sophie, and I was like, yeah, I, I vibe with you, Sophie. I, I you are me I for real, remember, for real. I do remember one day you let the floodgates open for me. Yep, yep, yep. It was yeah, it was a time. I recall a moment. Also, where you confided in me that you needed me, and what did I tell you, bro? Mm -hmm. What did I say? Yeah, no, you're always going to be here. No, I appreciate that. And I mean, I, that was uh, that's the big message of this show, of, like, the whole philosophy. I mean, which is the same for the original, but, like, friends are the family you choose, you know? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like the importance of a support system. And I feel like it conveyed that message really well in both seasons. Like, oh, yeah. The characters are amazing. Like, um, mm -hmm. also, uh, to be fair, though, um, we don't see much of their actual parents. Yeah, except for, like, Val's super sexy parents. <laughs> We get to see Which Angie we're only again. Introduced in season two. Yeah, we get to see Angie again. I'll go ahead and spoil that. We get to see yeah. Angie and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I was Angie so happy. And... Yeah. Angie, Angie and Veronica's and dad. Lies. Yeah. Angie and Veronica's dad. I, but like, I, because like, uh, I was live texting with Brian. I got to that episode and I'm like, yo, is that? That's how I was like. That's Veronica's dead. Like I was all I was all, I was making a joke to myself the whole time I was watching that Val looks a lot like Veronica. <laughs> Veronica's dead, and then Brian's like, "You do you do know who the mom is, right?" And I was like, "No, I was so focused on uh, like Hiram Lodge oh, cool. that I didn't know who the mom." So and then I looked. I actually looked. And I was like, oh, "Wait a minute, that's Angie!" Oh my yeah. god! I was like, please do the I told you so dance. I need you I need to see the I told you so dance again. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh. I saw her, I was Yes. Yes. Absolutely yes. Like oh, which, then... they perfectly make her parents. Oh yeah, no, both of them oh, yeah. do one hundred percent make up Val. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also another like gr Let's just talk about the guest stars before we actually get into screen time. Oh and yeah, yeah. No, yeah. The guest, the guest stars are phenomenal. Um, yeah. Un and unlike in the original, which is a, which is a great change, I, I think they took notes on some of the fee uh, like of the feedback of the original show. Unlike the original, we actually get to see future Sophie, played by the incredible Kim Cattrall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she actually plays like a decent part. Yeah, where you see her for. Like five minutes of the episode, or and something she and like she that. actually like has Sophie mannerisms. Like it's not just mm -hmm. you know, play. She's not just like reading lines, you know, as a older woman. She's reading them as an older Sophie, and she still sounds like Sophie. You know, like that takes talent. Yeah, because the thing with the the original was, uh, they kind of tried, but. Bob Saget is still going to be Bob Saget. Yeah, Bob Saget, yeah. God rest his soul, like, did not have <laughs> Ted's voice. Definitely not. But, and then we have uh, fucking <sighs> Agent Coulson. Yeah, Clark Gregg. Exactly. Clark Gregg. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that later. But Clark Gregg, uh, like, he caught, that caught me super off guard. Also, um, I did. I did not recognize Clark Gregg because his character was like bald. Oh, he plays a bald character. What you mean? No, but Jay? like, no, but like, you know, he he's all, like as Coulson, he's always like dressed to the nines. Like this was just like casual New Yorker, like Clark Gregg. That I can, that I can see. And also, it took me a while to realize who uh, Swish was. Wait, Swish is somebody. Huh? That's Victor. Oh shit! From Love Victor. You're right. We uh, I don't think we yeah. did a podcast episode on it. Like I, we we talked about it, and we talked about doing uh the first season. I th I think we covered yeah. this the first season in like the uh Twitch only or YouTube only. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Uh, it was definitely the uh, like the previous YouTube iteration we covered. Yeah, the first one, the first season. Man, mm -hmm. I feel bad, kid, though. Not oh. too much. Oh yeah, because... no, no, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it when we get there. That's gonna be like a yeah. that's gonna be a repeated phrase all throughout this uh, opening segment. Uh, but yeah, no, this is like the characters are fantastic, and oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. one of the Even reasons the I'm. One of the reasons I'm not going to edit this is because I'm even going to keep in the parts where we cut off each other because, like, just like the show, I want this episode to just showcase the chaos of our friendship. I mean, yeah. It's... Be because, like, that's the thing, folks. Like, you know, we've mentioned several times that we are very close friends. 
but like you know with a lot of like a uh, host and personalities they say that but they don't really mean it i want to show that we really mean it um well also we're really close but we're all nero spicy at the same time yeah yeah very true very true now uh in our own, like special ways about it is because so two out of the three of us are loud I wouldn't say obnoxious, but very loud, opinionated people. Um, hundred percent. You're not loud, Brian. You're not. We we have to get you to. We have to force you to speak up. You're not loud. No, that was for the wouldn't say obnoxious part. What do you? What you trying to say, Brian? Huh? <laughs> huh? I mean, you go say it to my virtual face. Is it one or both, Brian? Because I try to be polite because... Look at look into the know, camera right now and say it to my face. I know audio people, you're not... This is going to be completely meaningless to y'all because y'all can't see anything. This is why you need to watch the YouTube version. But Brian, mm -hmm. I'm not continuing this segment until you look into the camera and say it to my face. What, that it was a joke? Uh-huh. Sure, buddy. Uh Sure. Also, look at the anime girl that is covering uh, my Discord icon right now. Tell it to my virtual face. I don't see that, Tony, because that's post-production. Well, then say it to his Discord icon, damn it. Ah. <laughs> oh. I hope I hope this is a fun episode for you guys. And seriously, though, audio people, you're missing out on some good comedy by not watching the YouTube version. Just saying. Indeed. Yeah, you, Indeed. You can't but, uh, see my face, but I am smiling ear to ear just from laughing so hard. Oh yeah, same. Because of, uh, oh yeah. Our oh, uh, yeah. or spicy takes on uh, his other homies. Yep. Uh, but speaking of takes on our homies, which actually that is a pretty good segue. Um, a fun thing that I did while watching the show was I was like, all right, I'm going to figure out which com which characters or combinations of characters each of us are. And so, you know, I'll 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 tell I'll tell you what I think of, and then I'll let the boys tell you like what their assessments of those you know combinations were i'll mention mine first i mentioned half of my combination uh at the top of the show uh i feel like i am the most like a combination of sophie and val i oh, have no. uh -huh. for real yeah mm -hmm. i have i have a lot of i have a lot of val's sass and like very upfront uh, like straightforward attitude, and I have Sophie's hopeless romantic heart, and yep. oh yeah, like and, and also, uh, also just uh, spiraling brain, spiraling scattered brain. Oh god! Also with with Val, the whole like playboy playgirl thing. Yeah, that she I, has. and also like it's not a it's not a just she's Latin, I'm Latin. Like I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to pull that card. All right. Yes. No. And also, all four. I'm more speaking to the audience than y'all. Yeah. And also, one thing I yeah. like about, and I can see this in a bit of J as well. She's also very genuine. Yeah. With no. how she and and she's and, and like uh, uh, the other part of Val that I definitely see is me. Uh, she's very protective of her friends, mm -hmm. especially the more cinnamon rolly mm -hmm. ones. Like Sophie at uh, times, mm -hmm. I like Brian can tell you I give him a lot of shit, but I'm also Brian's biggest defender. Oh yeah, yeah. like um, I mean, that whole thing with uh with a uh, what a uh, Val and uh, Sophie have where it's like the, tougher fluff, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. tougher. That, that's definitely a you thing. Oh yeah, but oh, I yeah. but I always but yeah. I don't give you a choice. I always give you tough. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you do know how to fluff. I do know how to fluff. I, if fluff is appropriate, I will fluff. Yes. But most of the time, what you need is tough. Also, yes. what do you think, gentlemen? Mm -hmm. I realize. Uh, yeah. You know, but we're still keeping it. 
we're still keeping it again showcase of the friendship yes i know exactly but a lot a lot of a lot of great shit great, oh yeah great yeah great so let me go ahead and break down for you guys my assessment of my co-hosts and which characters i think they are a combination of because both are a combination of two characters uh we'll start with brian i actually think and yeah. i told brian straight up like as soon as like i watched enough of the show i was like all right brian i think you're a combination of the siblings jesse and ellen you have like Je you have jesse's like big creativity but you also just have ellen's just weirdness like and yeah. I, I I mean it in the best way, but like like Ellen has this weird cinnamon roll energy that is mm -hmm. like also just a hundred percent Brian. Yeah, she does carry uh, that not protect mm -hmm. energy. Yeah. She's a also also she yeah. has that little bit of thing where it's like uh will massively inconvenience herself. Before like thinking about like asking for help, boy, yeah, or that, something that totally, like, so, yeah, I, I, like I this, haven't seen that before, or, or like that whole do... like that whole stairs incident yep. with her, yep, mm -hmm. or or I'm they, going like... to work, work, work. That's I mean, a fucking that kind of... that's a fucking it, ear work. Well, it is, it is. Well, hey, no, hey and uh, damn it, and uh, I know, right? Well, Sorry. <laughs> What I'm trying to make here is also she lets her uh, her kind heart get the better of her when her friends decide to intrude yeah. on her therapy. And, I, is and, I, and I'm not going to lie, you know, no. I'm, 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 call, we're, I'm calling us out here, Tony. Uh, very much like Ellen's friends, we have taken advantage of our cinnamon roll as well. Um, yes, we have. In which... And, I, and his I and his kindness. I apologize, Brian. Yeah, same. Indiscretions that I have done. Uh, but I will say that you mentioned the uh, the I'm going to work thing. If you remember, later brought that back with Sophie. I love that. That's and definitely so, uh, a move that uh, we would do. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Hundred. 100%, Brian. Like, the Sophie Allen friendship is the you and me friendship. But yep. also, we could totally sell the fuck out of cabbage. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, Brian, you... This is what I love about you, man. You have this genuine aura where you can just come off right away. It's like, I can trust this guy. Yeah, and like, honestly, like, you know... Again, this is basically just the friendship cast along with the uh, How I Met Your Mother discussion. But seriously, a lot like Ellen, you're the you're the type of person who like just just talking to you in general like takes away the some of the the rain clouds in my brain and the and the pessimism that I naturally have. <laughs> Although, oh yeah, uh, if you are a long term if you are a long term fan, like. Uh, or even a short-term fan nowadays, you'll know that uh, at least when we started the podcast where it was just Jay and me, it was clear optimist, pessimist. Yeah. And then in strolled just uh, the random third wheel. <laughs> you mean the missing? The you mean the missing ingredient? I mean, look. <laughs> you, 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 you might you might be a relatively recent addition, but honestly, like we gave you shit for the Last of Us thing and the, and the Mike thing, which caused us a lot of issues. We talk about that more in the Unicorn episode, so I'm not really gonna fill it in here. But mm -hmm. like, yeah. you know, even with all those problems, honestly, I can't imagine the show without you. You know, but also here, one thing I can make fun of. Also, clear. Tony. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Brian. Mm -hmm. I just, real quick, Tony. Yeah. Another thing is, uh, I mentioned it offhand, but yeah, it's like you're the wild card, so it's not like it's a uh, black, white. It's black, white, and gray. Yep. 
And one thing what? that I can try to like listen in for is like, well, okay. So while I was editing, full disclosure, while I was editing the unicorn episode, mm-hmm. the uh, audio onlys, I just kind of really perked up my ears. I did it like a real bat thing. Really listened in. And just by the tone of your voice throughout the entire recording, I just got to see, Brian, were you angry? Were you okay? I, I kind of got that vibe, low-key. I didn't want to say nothing. Tired. Ah, so this was you oh. having your Tony. Oh my goodness. I was like, did I do something wrong? Did Jay do something to piss you off? I, like, I, what? I, what? No. Okay, I'm glad I wasn't no. the only one who got that. <laughs> okay, I'm. Uh, thank you for confirming I'm not crazy, Tony. Well, I had that thought too. I thought I was going crazy. All right. It's like, nah. It was combination of uh, tired and then tired, but drinking energy drink to push through. Ah. Uh, oh. That's not a good combination, though, for you, bud. It is not. Look, if there's, <laughs> if there's one thing that I've learned about all three of us, like, you know, there are very few things that completely overlap in the uh, Venn diagram that is our personalities. But one thing I have learned that we all share, we all need sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In order to be real I'm people. Like, well, folks, listen to me. Listen to me when I say this. When we're tired, we are very catty bitches. We're we also, are catty bitches. We, we are not tired. real people if when we are tired. I'm gonna be real with you. Uh like I, I I make this comment all the time in the morning to my parents. I'm like, look, do not talk to me please until I've had my two cups of coffee. Because I am not a real functional human until I've had my two cups of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. And I have people in the past like i'm sorry if you try to call me on the phone when i first wake up, i'm like the fuck do you want oh <laughs> oh did... yeah oh yeah i was oh yeah no I, I i've been on the receiving end of that quite a bit oh like, and also we've been leaving him of him trying to role play while on the through that not in that way folks tabletop game there no. brian Tabletop. Folks, tabletop games. Damn it, Brian. You and your accidental euphemisms. Quit acting like you're trying to be a sexy Flanders. (laughs) Hi, diddly hey. I wish. (laughs) But one thing about our cattiness when we're tired, it can really hurt us. Yeah. When you have that type of personality, when you first wake up to a phone call and you don't really look at who's calling you, and it's your boss. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. But uh, moving on, uh, Brian. Don't do it. What did, uh, so what do you think of my assessment of you being uh, the co- a combo of the siblings? Oh, no. Oh, no. You were right on. At first, I thought maybe I had a little bit of Charlie because of his... Uh, his uh, shelteredness but once you like fully fully went into it i was like yeah i'm a combo of the siblings yep yeah i saw that too with both of those two characters Mm -hmm. for myself even yeah they're very brian yep at least brian doesn't go to uh to bars and yeah yeah brian brian thankful brian thankfully doesn't have the jesse cringe thank god Mm -hmm. No, we have we do have our own cringe lord present, but like thankfully he doesn't transcend yeah. to that level of cringe either. Which I, otherwise I, I would have to smack the shit out of him. And I, he's al- uh, he's already told me he doesn't want the hands. So yeah, I will, I, will uh, not go. I told myself that if I were to ever write parody songs, they need to be on the level of Weird Al Yankovic and not. Whatever the fuck Jesse was doing. Yep. Yeah, but uh, also I will say that as a little funny transition into it, uh, we were talking about like who we were, and I said who I thought Tony was, 
and Jay was like 100%. Yep, because that was, that was the exact combination I was thinking, which brings me to Tony. My assessment of my good friend Tony was that Tony is a combination of one Charles and one Mr. Drew. So for Charlie, it's because uh, very much like Brian said, you know, Charlie is sheltered and naive and kind of bad at reading rooms. But also, Charlie's a wild card to where whenever he sashays into the room, he makes it fun. You might just be like, oh, you sweet summer child most of the time, but he makes it fun. Also, also like his whole like thing that it's like they try to put on bruises and... Mm-hmm. He just immediately fails. But um, also, just, like, just, to, 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 just to clarify, because, you know, it's been a while since you've seen Tony's face. To- unlike Charlie, Tony is not built like a Renaissance statue. I am not. I am currently built like a lumberjack that put on at least a bit more poundage than he actually thought he did. Yep. But, uh, yeah, and the Drew part, Drew is the level of cringe Tony is at. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, it's all- yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and also Drew, he has the you? he has the Drew habit of oversharing. Yes, yes. Like the whole like when he enters the 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 part of the uh, like the one party and he goes well look who it is it's sophie the woman who broke my heart i'm like that's a tony thing that's a tony yeah, thing also when you when you talked about the whole uh uh thing about him getting his you know what oh yeah and then and then let's not for, and then also let's not forget the uh the hurricane episodes like the finale for season 2 uh you know he was like I would go home, but, and then, you know, Sophie says, oh, yeah, the storm, I get it. He goes, no, my mom's having a guy over. I was like, Tony would totally say that. Even though I would not want to hear it, Tony would say that. Yeah. Yeah. I would say something ridiculous like that. That's another thing that both of them have in common is uh, sometimes they're just brutally honest. Yep. And also, like, very similar to another small thing that drew does that is very similar to tony he like finds the weirdest things funny that aren't actually funny like his like drew's hysterical laughter about really bad at counting really felt like a tony thing i'm like tony these bird videos aren't as funny as you think they are like they were funny for a little bit but like nah that ain't it chief yeah, yeah, the the Lemmy Smash. Yep. Fascination. Yep. That it was, was a... it was a weird, it was a weird rabbit hole that I went down, and I'm sorry about that. Uh... It it gave kind of a chuckle because I was mostly watching it for like the birds. Because I really like the birds. Because the birds were beautiful. Uh, don't tell Iron Mouse. That makes sense. Uh, but yeah, so Tony's definitely a combination of Drew and Charlie, but Tony, uh, you know, don't just take my word for it. Let's hear it from the man himself. What do you think of my assessment? I mean, parts of it accurate. At least I don't have a, a trauma, a traumatic home life like Charlie did. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to disclose it on the podcast. But See, it may not, not be ever- on the level, but it is trauma. Yes, but the one thing that I just kind of accepted is I'm trying to move past it, try to so improve is Charlie. myself. Yeah, which is good for him. Yeah. I don't want to let any of that just kind of get to me like Charlie does. Well, I mean, and- he's, getting, Charlie is, he's getting much better he's, at it in the later seasons. He's mostly season. okay. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Charlie is mostly okay, but then he'll have a moment where it's just like trauma. 
Oh, that's what that is. Also, it took me like way longer than it should have to realize that he is a parody himbo version of Prince Charles. Yes. So I guess he's King yes. Charles now. Um, yeah. And also, I find it very funny that during the hurricane episode, and he was like talking about what happened to him when he was a small boy. Saying that the corgis were there to protect him. Oh man, one of those corgis look. Uh, one of those corgis looks like my boy. I was like, uh, it was funny. Uh, he was actually in my room. I was like, look, it's you. You got a cameo, buddy. Look at that. Look at that. There you are. It's your people. And also, when he was Charlie was starting to talk, like, oh, it kept our fur nice and shiny. Like, oh, we are not. We are not doing that, buddy. Yeah. We are, we are not doing that. No. Uh, and then Drew. Oh, you sweet summer child. Right. And then I looked at Drew and I'm like, buddy, when when we're drunk, we we should not say the things that we do. Sometimes in general. I mean, uh, I don't know, Tony. Where 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 have you heard that before? Uh. Much you can't, you can't see me, but I'm looking at him sarcastically, inquisitively, audio people. Like, Same. Pretty much my entire life as it is, but I do so anyway because that's the way I've always been. Fair. But, but, one thing I say for sure is that with Drew, yes, I have those mega cringe tendencies yes it may be more often than not but i will say this at least the honest part is what i try to shine through with it yeah, yeah. and i mean yeah. and uh you know again y'all can't see his face or his fits uh, for now because you know the mic issue but uh, I, I I think I've told you this a couple times you do sometimes dress like a school principal well it's just what I feel comfortable with yeah. you know? I mean and that's the same with Drew and, but when it yeah. comes to but here's the most amazing thing that I find about more so Charlie than Drew because mm -hmm. I have my problems with Drew, just him as a character, not so much like connected to me. Uh huh. Because even though I can be a petty bitch, I'm not as petty of a bitch as Drew is. Fair. Thankfully. I will but give you credit in that regard. But Charlie yeah. was having a moment, so it's where he was talking to another character and just being real more insightful. It's like, I know. It's it'll be okay. You got stood up, but there are other people out there that could uh, make you feel better. Far more than just one person. And it's with that seem like yeah, yeah, I vibe with that, Charlie. Yeah, no, we actually we actually had we. Uh, it's funny we actually like. I'm not gonna go into the details about this conversation because again, this isn't supposed to be a uh, lifestyle cast, even though. This ep for this episode it will be, but we actually had a very similar like conversation like personally, uh, of that same kind of tone and vibe, and uh, Tony really helped me out there. Um, yeah, um, and I will say that uh, Tony does have his moments, kind of like uh, Charlie when he was talking to the kid, where maybe fumble on the words but you get the meaning yeah no no yeah, the, yeah 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 it's a it's 100 percent clear that he means well and you know what he's doing is great it's just yeah you might want to ease back on some of the words there buddy mm -hmm. it's just proper uh i mean with him he's a gorgeous himbo british person as opposed to me a 30 year old autistic man who uh, i mean i i subscribe to the to the fan theory that i've seen going around that charlie is on the spectrum which wouldn't be too difficult to i mean yeah a very wide spectrum of things and it wouldn't 
be surprising if he was. However, just due to him having the family life that he did, mm -hmm. it, it might be a more of a product of that. Oh, yeah. I mean, thankfully, thankfully yeah. I haven't seen shit. I like mean, I mean you know, head. but you know how the you know how the royals are. Imagine mm -hmm. if in this world, one of the royal, like, a member of the royal family was born on the spectrum. They treat that person mm -hmm. like a dog. Let's be real. Yes. And also, they Pretty do good. everything in their power to hush it. Yep. And they wouldn't yep. care if he left, because that wipes the stain off of their royal record. So, yeah. Yep. Th again, these were just all the points to, to the Charlie is on the spectrum theory that I saw. Uh in a YouTube yeah. short somewhere. I don't remember which one. Sorry, I can't give you credit, person. But I really like what? your theory. I mean, it wouldn't be that... It wouldn't be that far off the pale, if that were the case, like I said. Mm -hmm. But one thing that kind of throws me for a loop on that, though... Uh-huh. And it might be a bit dark of me to say, but... They would treat the corgis better than him yeah they definitely would i mean and they did they they gave I mean, the, they gave the corgis top of the line food which they gave to charlie because they could they couldn't care less about giving him top of the line food for people because so they, they saw him as lesser and as an animal but because he was of good stock they still gave him good animal food I mean, probably not like the best because well, yeah, these yeah, are yeah. He's not a poor. dog. Yes, I, I'm aware. But there, but I'm I'm not saying dog. I'm just saying, but these are corgis. Yeah. It, it's like if I were to be born anywhere else, and I was the person that I was today. Oh God, mm -hmm. I will. I would not put it past the family that took me in to not want to, A, toss me outside to fend for myself, or do something far worse. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, so now we'll go into, like, our spoiler-free full thoughts before we jump into like screen time and stuff <laughs> to kind of transition off of that dark note, <laughs> go Sorry, back folks. into positive town. Uh, yes, please. All right. So I'll start, I'll start off. I really like the show. I really did. Um, I do have words and they will come later in the episode, but other than that, like, I thought the show was awesome. It was great because How I Met Your Mother, uh, for me, at the time it was coming out, like, you know, I was, like, in high school, so it was like, you know, this is who I'm probably going to grow up to be. I didn't exactly relate to any of the characters, but with this, with this cast, because, you know, I'm in my late 20s, about to enter my 30s, and they are in their late 20s entering their 30s, like... I was like, oh, I get that reference. Oh, yeah, no, that applies to me. That applies to me. And like I said, for for a lot of Sophie and Val, I was like, oh, they're just like me for real, for real. <laughs> like, I, I, like, when, uh, when Sophie was like, the Dirty Music video is my, uh, my favorite music video of all time, I was like, same, me too. Like, seriously, that is my favorite music video of all time. Uh, although, I, I can't necessarily put a finger on the reason why. I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. It is a mystery there, folks. Mm -hmm. It is a mystery. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it, it was super relatable. And yes, there were cr there was cringe in there, but a lot of those cringe moments were just like, a, oh, I would do that. Or... Oh, secondhand embarrassment. Like, yeah. so like the Jesse, the Jesse Barr parody scene. I was literally doing the exact same thing Sophie did. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take off my headphones 
and I'm going to watch the I'm going to watch the scene play out without audio. And when I know the scene is over, I'm going to put my headphones back on. Uh, but yeah. Well, I, I was like, bro, no, no. Uh, oh, no. But yeah, so that that those are like my initial thoughts um, i i really enjoyed it it was crazy relatable i honestly thought when it was first announced that i wouldn't like it because like i was like oh this is gonna just be a cash grab this is just them trying to capitalize off of the, the you know the popularity and you know belovedness of the original uh it, it's not gonna be anything new they're just gonna repeat the same formula make the same mistakes and this show proved me wrong i ended up liking it in a lot of the same ways but also in very different ways uh so yeah i i highly recommend it if you are a millennial in your late 20s early 30s you should give this a watch you're gonna relate to a, a lot more to, of it than you think jesus christ oh, man. jay is so right so, so right so brian what are your initial thoughts? You were yeah. the first one to finish out so of the three right. of us. Well, see, my first thing is that, uh, yeah, I heard about this show, and I went a while, while without watching it. Heard it was okay. Love Hilary Duff, so wanted to eventually check it out, and when I did, I was like, hey, that's actually really good. Recommend it to Jay. Yep. I, and, and then I watched the first season, and I was like, oh yeah, this is good. We should do this for the podcast. And, and then I, like, I completely forgot about it. Because I was like, ain't no way I'm watching this week to week. Watching this week to week would give me anxiety. Well, also, for some reason, for season two, not only did they extend the amount of episodes, they also gave it a mid-season finale. Where it ended in late March yeah, and didn't it was, come back yeah, until was, late May. Yeah, they did the CW thing, which was which was definitely odd. Oh, yeah. And I didn't, men and I didn't mention this so in long. my uh, thoughts. My bad. Go ahead, Brian. I was just saying, that's why it took us so long to get to it. Oh, yeah. And uh, real quick, I didn't mention this in my thoughts, but as I alluded to earlier, I had a childhood crush on Hillary Duff from the Lizzie McGuire days. But like, yo... To see her go from cute to va ba boom, I was like, damn, mm -hmm. I, I, Hillary Duff, I didn't expect you to be caked up. Not like super caked up, not like Val, because, I mean, because Val got a, Val got a shape. Like, mm -hmm. Val got a shape. Mm -hmm. Whenever Val walks Wait. across the screen, you turn your head. She has a very right. distinct silhouette. Mm -hmm. I and I looked mm -hmm. at them like, hot damn! Yep. And Miss Duff, Which, what are you, girl, hell yeah, right? Miss, Which uh, yeah. this may or may not be related. Uh huh. But uh, did you know that Hillary Duff is the mom? Oh shit! Okay, she officially gets the title of MILF. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, and uh, she she actually said, uh, talking on uh, Ellen, she actually mentioned how uh. Her daughter, like, uh, when she was, like, four, re like, discovered her mom's singing career. And oh, that's all man. she wanted to listen to that's in awesome. the car. Oh, that's awesome. But that's probably, <laughs> but, that, that's but probably he, torture. Like, that's actually well, something I've thought about to a lesser extent. Like, I was like, oh, my God. What if, like, in the, I was like, in the future when I have kids and they fucking find my like youtube channel or like go back and listen to old podcast episodes Ugh, oh no but oh, she was like oh she God. was like she'd be like dropping her off at like kindergarten or pre-k and like blasting in the car is let the rain fall, fall down, down. <laughs> and she's like oh god they're gonna think i'm so conceited hey now hey now this is what dreams, is what dreams are made of <laughs> I'm a, fan. I, I, I'm a fan, yo. I'm a fan. Yeah. Honest, yeah. Honestly, Jay, you had that same fear and anxiety. Well, I do too. All right. 
Fair. Oh, yeah. But anyway, back to the show. I did really enjoy it. Like Jay said, there's some moments where it's like reasonable cringe where you know you did it. Like, I haven't gone that far yet, but I have done like very scaled down versions of like Ellen would be a the uh, staircase scene. But, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, and then there were some where it's just, and so am I, 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 yeah, and it's a, it's like he said, I have words, I have words for some parts, but for the most part, yeah, I really enjoyed it, and it was a nice surprise. Get out of my head, song, stop it, stop it, this is gonna distract you the whole podcast. It doesn't fall under the, uh, Typical pitfalls of like a remake. It's its own thing, and that's really cool, and I really liked it. Oh yeah. Again, yeah. Uh, I'm not cut. I'm not cutting any of this out. But seriously, song, get out of my head, please. You're catchy. I get it. It hasn't Stop. left. It hasn't left my body yet, Jay. Same. I am mad. I, I need to increase the rent. I need to increase the rent. It does not. It, it does not get to live here rent free. Uh man anyways tony uh your initial thoughts on the show utterly fun i have like my biggest gripes with a lot of these things because it's so relatable Uh uh-huh because i've been in situations akin to what these characters have gone through and it makes me mad that i have to look at myself in the mirror it's like why are some of my fellow millennials this damn stupid? Yep, it's 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 like it's like that one uh, like you know, for anybody who is a as a fan of VTubers, it's it's like the uh, the that one Cora name uh, meme. Oh look, it's the consequences of my actions. Mm-hmm. Uh, or my favorite Corona uh, thing. I die now. Goodbye forever. <laughs> That's how I felt after some of those like big second-hand embarrassment moments. I'm like, I die now. Yeah. I good forever. Yep, good like forever. Jesse with the parody. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, no, no, no. It's not even that, Brian. Some of the moments that I felt that level of pain, I was like, no, I hate it here. <laughs> Why? Yep. Why would you do this to yourself? Yep. No. Buddy, no. And that was more so directed at something that Sid did. Mm-hmm. Yep. I I, I, oh. I have a feeling I know what you're talking about. Uh, well, but we yeah. can get into that later. Yep. Oh, also real quick uh, for the initial thoughts, uh, for the initial thoughts section, J- just because like this has nothing to do with the plot, but like, this is another thing that I related to since we're still on that topic. Like, you know, as a, you know, as evident by the intro, like Sophie has a song on loop that she plays during her sad moments, which is Drops of Jupiter. Uh, I'll, you guys know to know what mine is? Mm. It's Let It Burn by Usher. Mm. Just burn. Oh, oh. Makes sense. I have like an entire like sad boy playlist. Same. Same. Where Same. It's like, I don't know if I can pick one. It's a musical no, arrangement, but, but like, like, let it burn. Near. Let it burn is the one that I have on loop. No, oh no, no, and no, no. So that makes total sense for you. Yep. Yeah. Here's something that's super dumb, right? I think I did it a bit extra. I made it like my own sad boy energy in my own head into its own little fucking musical <laughs> with the playlist that I have. I'd watch that musical. You just see this entire musical of me just being this utter sad boy. Listen, as, as someone who, you know, you know, lived through it with you and witnessed some of that, I'd watch that musical. As long as it's not a one-man play, I'd watch that. Yeah. Also, I, I I would have to have final say on whoever gets casted as the part in the part of me. I'm sure same goes for Brian. Yeah. <laughs> for well, you, Brian, I'd that's... say Ben Platt. Ben Platt. Oh, okay. 
just uh, just kind of just throwing that out there since you know <laughs> Tony mentioned that. But yeah, no, for real this uh, time. Also on the mm-hmm. on the uh, just to continue that thought though, I also thought uh, tying into the show that uh, Josh Peck. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, that 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 could totally work. That could totally work. Yeah. But then, uh, but one thing, but to the point that you're making for like one song, it's a, uh, it's a neo song that is that was on his uh, the same album that had a lot of his more famous hits. Oh, in like, I in, I think I know what song it is. Can I guess? Can I guess? Go ahead. Fade into the background. No. Actually, with that song, it's another favorite of mine, but it didn't. It fits more so, uh, like other thoughts. That's like a song dedicated to an entire relationship. Okay. But just for pure sad boy energy that I had, it's one of my favorite. It's my favorite song of all time because of how beautifully it's made. And I see to that song every so often just to get me in a certain headspace okay. if I wanted to like something. Okay. Because also the lyrics in the song. Lie to me. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Lie to me, lie to me. Oh, that's a good one. Oh man. And like a out of all the songs in that playlist of sad of Sad Boy the musical. <laughs> That is like the showstopper if I, for Act if, if I had to pick a second one besides Let It Burn, the other one for me is Talking to the Moon by Bruno Mars. That's my that fucking Alone moon. With My Thoughts song. Talking that is another to good. the moon. Yep. I to you. But anyway... <laughs> uh... You know, Brian join, join join the thought experiment, Brian. What is your sad what is your sad boy repeat song? Yeah, come on, Brian. I don't know. Star. Give it some thought. We can stall. Yeah. It's like Cause you I, know, I, I'm honestly very curious. We're we're all very musically inclined, and you know, yeah. music was a big music is a big part of this show. I love all the songs that they play during the end credits. It's it's fucking oh, yeah. great. A lot oh, of man. those songs are fantastic. Oh, one of, in one of the episodes with one of my favorite guest stars that they they had in season two, they chose. Uh-huh. The song I was hoping that was gonna play in the credits, and I was like, "No, you cut it off at the best part." I was I wasn't done singing yet. Oh, is it? What oh yeah. Is it what I think it is, Jay? You yeah, you know you you're, you you. I'm sure you probably know which one it is. We'll talk about that but, episode when we get there, when we get to season yeah. two. But yes, I'm pretty sure you know which one it is. Um, I don't want to be. A- here. Yep. Yeah. You know. Don't want to lose it. Like, want to lose it again. Oh. Uh, hmm. Okay. But yeah, the mu- music, uh, music is a big part of this. Not only it, because Jesse's a big musician and you know all other stuff. The music in the show really hits and like yeah. really scores the mood for real. I'll I'll say um. If it's not, if it's like non-romantic, then um, then uh, it's a. It was on several YA shows for a while, but uh, the Court Overstreet, hold on. Okay, solid, solid. And then um, I sang it for one of our karaoke nights, but for the romantic one, I know it's kind of optimistic, but. Be All Right by Dean Lewis. Interesting. At least you didn't choose one of the other songs that you sung for karaoke night. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and say it. Uh, what was it? Uh, Treat You Better, the Shawn Mendes song. If you had said that, I would have been like, you okay, oh, buddy? Oh, God, no. You okay, buddy? God, Do no. we need to have a talk? And Do we need to have a talk? No. And uh, I even said there that the only reason why I chose it was because it's in my range. It's a good and it's a good song, but like the vibe yeah. is kind of the vibe. Hmm. The vibe is. Oh yeah. 
problematic. Problematic. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That, that is the best word to say it. See, you two were trying to do good. Be alright is about is about uh knowing that you've been cheated on and that things will be okay. Yep. Yep. But yeah, they use music really well in this show. Like, you know, a lot of times like YA shows are very guilty of this. They'll just throw in like a popular song that does not even fit the scene just to have a popular song in there. Like, this is what the kids listen to. But like, yeah, with uh, with this, like one of my favorite examples is uh, during a flashback of uh, when Sophie and Val met, a particular song plays that like is exactly what I was thinking in my head. And then the music actually started playing in the episode. I'm like, wait. Is this in my head or is it actually the show? Oh, it's actually the show. <sighs> yeah. It was, and it was also, uh, they did something that uh, How I Met Your Mother did. Mm -hmm. Where it, it's um, older songs from when you were younger covered in modern time. Yep. Yeah, no, it was great. It was great. All right, so you know we we've sang we've sang the praises of the show. We've talked about it non spoilery. Like I said, if you are a millennial, late twenty something, early thirty something, go check this out. You're gonna relate to it. You're gonna laugh hard. I I I had some like genuine like belly laugh out loud moments with this show. <laughs> like I definitely did too. So. But... Before we get to actual topics, let's actually get into the news. Oh, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and jump right into the news with Brian. All right, people. So, uh, going from one serious topic to another, because, uh, it's a running thing here, and we've got to address it. This is your we've got another writer strike update. Yes, or should we now say writer actor strike? Yup. So we talked shit about by them the before. Way, mm -hmm. I was just gonna say, fun fact for you before we get into everything, just so you know how dire and how messed up the situation is. This is the first time that these two have struck together in 60 years. Yep. And, like, you know, in our previous Writer Strike update, we talked shit about the Actors Guild before because we were like, all right, that's not cool, y'all. You, uh, you know, solidarity should be a thing if you really do believe in change. So I will definitely give a big shout-out to the Actors Guild. Like, good for y'all for stepping up. Well, apparently they were back and forth for a while. That's what I'm saying. The actors. Yeah, and then, and then like, they were going to join, and then they backed out. But now they, like, officially, firmly joined. Well, you heard what the official thing that was, like, pushed them over the edge. Uh, I did, but I'm not remembering off the top of my head. AI. Oh, yeah, they right. wanted... They wanted to, uh, the studios wanted to, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Get it. It, it's because they, they, so they wanted to actor... update contracts, so, yeah. They wanted to update contracts so that, like, it also includes their likeness, so that if they die, they have the rights to AI them into well, other shit. It's not just that, dude. They also wanted to take background actors and take, like, background actors and say, um, for one day of work. You get two hundred dollars, but then they have the rights in perpetu in perpetuity to your likeness to include it in whatever project they have forever, That's and you don't crazy. get crazy. That is absolutely insane. Yes, and apparently, uh, you know how they're supposed to get like royalties. Yeah, some of these actors have been coming out and like saying how abysmal they get like um one of the first vocal people mm -hmm. 
was uh, Soso from uh, Orange is the New Black. Oh, yeah, yeah. She also voiced uh, Penny Parker in Sp- the P- Spider-Verse yeah. movies. Well, she she went viral on TikTok when she showed one of her checks, and it was only for $30. 30 what? For Orange is the New Black. You mean, like, that there had to be some extra, like, three zero dollars? It was like three, two, something, something. I hope that's three thousand two hundred something, something. Nope. What the nope. fuck? Yep. Um, she was a prominent actually, character um, in a lot of in the later seasons. Yeah. Um. Uh, Sean Gunn says that for Gilmore Girls, he barely gets anything. Oh no! What? Uh, I believe he said that one time he got his uh he got a royalty check because it's like monthly. Yeah, because I mean it's syndicated. The, yeah, he he got one check for playing Kurt. I believe he's. I could be wrong, but I believe he said one of the checks that he got for it was for negative one cents. What the fuck? Well, yeah, we're past. Yeah, the, we're, um, we're past. The, we're way past the five minute mark. I can say it. What? the fuck yeah uh also uh this was even before the writer strike happened but uh donnie brasco mm-hmm. he's on uh tiktok and uh he has a he you... has a series oh you mean dante bosco dante bosco yeah yeah no you said you said danny brasco uh might be the white boy talking guy uh, but uh because I thought I said Dante, but anyway, uh, he has a he has a series on TikTok mm-hmm. where it's a uh, what do I eat today? Or what do I eat for dinner tonight? And it's he has like ten of the different royalty checks because you know before he had his big stuff, he was also in he was a child actor in yeah. a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. and so he'll say that um, the numbers that he gets for the different roles wildly range like one will be for ten dollars and he's like i guess i'm eating mcdonald's tonight and then he can have one where it's like you get to eat a steak dinner and all in between oh and man it was also a cool series though because he would also then go into detail about the role oh, and cool. talk about it bigger or small but yeah he just proved like how little uh how little they get. Um, going back to Orange is the New Black. Uh, what's his face? The baby daddy uh, guard? Hornstash. Oh no no no. No. Oh no no no. The the it was it the guy that was it was the guy on the crutches, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the guy on the crutches. Yeah, he actually came out and said that while he was filming Orange is the New Black, he had his normal job. Mm-hmm. And he kept his normal job because it was paying better than ours with New Black. Yeah, it's like, um, that's another thing, right? Uh, so, shout out to Captain Midnight. I recently watched a, uh, a Captain Midnight video that, like, kind of talked about, like, the original landscape for TV and how syndication was how a lot of actors, like, you know, were able to survive between jobs. And yeah. streamers, w- with streamers now? And I'm not talking Twitch. I mean, mm-hmm. like streaming TV shows. That's almost impossible because, yeah, like not only are they like significantly shorter seasons, but apparently a lot of them just get paid up front. So, like you know, you could have a role in say like a show Wednesday, like Wednesday that is super popular, and still only get paid as much as a show that only lasted a season and got canned it does yeah. because oh, yeah. streamers are very tight-lipped about actually showing their numbers uh you know actors can't actually do what they used to do and leverage the popularity of the shows they've been on as like a negotiation leverage for their pay on future projects so like a Jenna yeah. Ortega, for example, despite how I mean she's big as it is, like her career's blowing up, but 
like say it wasn't right and like she was still only just doing tv shows so you know she is the breakout star and lead of wednesday but she if she wasn't a you know active pop and star would only get a, probably a pretty small upfront fee as compared to like a you know Luis Guzman uh Christina Ricci and a lot of the uh, more established uh stars on Wednesday cuz that's the thing about oh, the yeah. big stars with these like limited series and the, the the streamers is that like because they're established and they're well known they have enough power to actually ask for a better price up front so they don't have to worry about the abysmal like checks in between yeah and uh like uh, i think we may have mentioned this when we were talking about the writer's strike but mm -hmm. this also applies to the actors is that these streaming sites will like talk to the creator and be and the people and be like yeah so here's our plan to do a couple seasons and you can do a couple seasons and so you sign this contract and we'll pay you like 10,000 for the first and then 20 for season two and then 30 for season three and then they cancel it after season one and so they don't have to pay that money and they save that money so I imagine that that's with uh, actors too and also something that's like br that was brought up in the Captain Midnight video which I, I definitely agree with uh, one of the cool things about shows like how I met your mother to tie it back into the main topic was the fact that like you know before streaming so before streaming shows when you had just your regular sitcoms and your regular like long-running shows they'd have writers rooms and like you know they would have a lot of like young writers in there and those young writers would like cut their teeth on these types of shows and work their way up and eventually they'd be showrunners and creators of their own and that's how yeah. we get a lot of the like breakout writers and showrunners that we have today like for one of the best examples i can think of off the top of my head is a uh, uh, legendary late night host conan o'brien i mean podcaster now too conan o'brien he is famously uh one of the writers for uh the simpsons in the early seasons he wrote for a lot of the early episodes and that's where he cut uh, cut his teeth a lot, especially in comedy. And then eventually, oh, his, yeah. his writing got so strong that he was able to, you know, land the, the Tonight Show. Um, and uh, with that, I, I just want to bring this up because I saw a few videos uh, talk about uh, the strikes as well. Mm -hmm. It's more so on, like... Uh, I just thought, like, we need to actually stay true to, like, source material to a lot of things because there are some people just wanting to put their – not so much a creative spin on a on a show, like, which was, like, the primary example where a lot of the writers thought they could write the show better than the – original author or and, like they just they hated the source material and actually just wanted to write their own fantasy project so yes, yeah. exactly. they just you know dressed up their fantasy pro their dream fantasy project as the witch yes exactly and that was mm -hmm. stuck in the corner of uh henry Campbell. Mm -hmm. also there was mm -hmm. a bit of a situation to uh, uh jenny ortega with uh wednesday yeah yeah, Jen, yeah, Jenna Ortega, yeah, Jenna Ortega even mentioned like she would uh, like she had to be unprofessional at times and just be like, no, my character wouldn't say something like that. Like that doesn't well, make did, any sense. And she'd actively and, ad lib and change lines. But, and, but now because. But the point I'm trying to make she's done that. Uh, go ahead, Brian. I just, I just wanted to add to what you were saying, Tony, and just add a little, like, footnote and say that that's why now for season two, if it ever comes, that uh, she's a producer on it now as well. Yeah, and that's, that's what I heard, too. And as a writer myself, it sticks in my craw that people who think that they know better than that think they could tell a better story 
than what the original author can do mm-hmm. or this kind of fan fiction-y sort of situation. Not to disparage fan fiction writers because we are fan fiction writers ourselves. Yeah. And a yeah. lot of fan fiction out there is fantastic, but I'm talking the cringe. Oh yeah, no, I, I I I I know, but I I just want I just wanted to make that comment because you know a lot of people use fan fiction as an insult word. Yeah, when but it's what not, I'm saying when you know there are some very good fan fictions out there. But what I'm pointing out here is just the types of people that write the just god awful fan fiction, mm-hmm. like on the level of. It, I'm just gonna get into it. A somewhat small soapbox, just real quick, because it really annoyed me. When you have, if we want to have like real representation in our fiction, we gotta have strong characters first. Mm-hmm. And I say strong characters in the sense of who they are as individuals, mm-hmm. not what their capabilities are, or this long laundry list of things. We don't want Mary Sue characters. It's not what we want. What we want are great characters. And one thing that annoys me, especially with Disney nowadays, the villain archetype is such a dirty word, such a dirty concept. It just annoys me to no end that within the past ten, five ye- like five to ten years, we haven't had a good I'd say the Disney I'd game. say the past ten years because like, you know, th- that conversa- that conversation has actually come up a lot in the Disney fandom as a Disney fan that like I'm t- and I agree. I'm tired of while it works for certain movies like Encanto where the real villain was family trauma. Yeah. Or generational trauma Disney villains need to be a thing. Disney villains are what made the Disney Renaissance yeah. amazing. Like you shouldn't mm-hmm. be but... afraid to have villains. Or yeah. or never choose to remake things just because you want to push push something out there. And also I'm tired of the twist villains like, you know, Look at those. like Hans. And... Like I love Frozen, but Hans was weak sauce. Mm -hmm. while we're on our soapboxes i just wanted to get that out there yeah but i I will say that though sorry but they're remaking snow white what oh you haven't heard of it yeah you didn't hear wait like animated remake no no my brother live action uh oh and you know what the best part is I have a feeling there's not a best part, but keep going. They're not using... It's not Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And it's it's Snow White and the Seven Ambiguously Magical Beings. Is that actually what they're calling it? No, it's just... We don't, we don't know for sure. The internet right now is in an uproar because... Because uh, photos were released. We don't know anything Who official. Who gives a fuck?! <laughs> Mm-hmm. The only official thing that we know that people have also been uh, causing a fuss about is uh, Snow White is a homegirl from uh, West Side Story. Oh, the the, Latina, the the chick who played Maria? Yeah. I mean, she's pale enough. But anyway, uh, back to the strike, though. The big, mm-hmm. those may be issues. But the biggest thing is just like with the writers. The two biggest things is they want a livable wage and to address the whole AI situation. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing is with the AI is if this goes through, this doesn't just affect them. If this goes through and they're able to do like AI to replace the actors or the writers... Whatever job you have, if it can be replaced by AI, damn sure the company will come in and replace you. Yep. You know, one, one day there and, might be AI podcasts and we'll have to we, we, we'll have to carry our asses somewhere else. And also, uh, this goes like talking about this writer's actor strike update actually goes to some 
more recent follow-up too with that. And uh, one of them is uh, going back to Disney, Bob Iger. Oh, now, I, I know what you're about to talk about. Bob Iger helped rebrand Disney when What's His Face took over. And so Bob Iger came back and helped realign Disney. And he said that he's slowing down the Marvel and the Star Wars so they can put out more quality content instead of quantity. And uh, but his recent but then, comments. This is about his recent comments, isn't it? Yeah, about oh, the strike. Fuck. Yeah, so uh, good because I wanted to talk about this. All right, uh, so I'm so I'm going to get my like unfiltered non-professional thoughts out of the way and then i'm gonna address this and then i'm gonna address it calmly and professionally so let's start with unprofessional first fuck you bob you make a right a salary large enough for like an entire working staff of a single show or movie i read your memoir uh, i i know the ballpark of how much you made because you mentioned it in the fucking book Fuck you. You have no right to make any of those calls or say anything is inappropriate or will ruin anything. If anything is ruining the industry, it's the fact that executives like you are making these dumbass fucking decisions with, and making everything like just robotic and lifeless instead of actually, you know, treating film for what it's supposed to be. I don't know, a fucking art form. What the yes, fuck because is wrong for with those you? that might not know what Jay is referencing, Bob Iger came out and spoke about the strike and said that it is unreasonable and that it would ruin the industry if they gave them what they wanted. Oh, it's unreasonable for people to have a living wage so they can survive and feed their families. It's unreasonable that people don't want to be replaced by robots and just feel like all the work that they put in blood sweat and tears into training auditioning all the rejection they had to climb their way up into this unforgiving shark infested bullshit industry to just get replaced by a fucking computer program oh yeah totally unreasonable fuck you bob oh oh and also, with that, just to piggyback on what uh, Jay was saying, to be a bit unprofessional myself. Yeah, no, I also, like I I know I said I was going to go back to professional mode, but no, I'm staying unprofessional. Fuck it. But one thing I will say to be a bit unprofessional, it makes me very angry, irrationally angry, that oh no, executives have the nerve and audacity to tell director how to do things to keep it safe mm -hmm. these two men know what i initially went to college for yep for free. yeah T tony went to uh, tony went to school for phil and you know why part of the reason why i decided to not pursue that any further to my dream since i was 15 years old was to direct film you want to know why I chose not to? It's because I knew I wouldn't make it. Because of the state Hollywood was in then and what it is now. It is so processed. It is so... Safe. Safe. It, it's because companies are aware that for those that are the loudest of majorities, both sides... I will say this, both sides have the loudest major uh, minorities when it comes to like what irritates the both of, mm -hmm. both of them. They want to play both sides. They want to make sure that they can play things safe. You can't do that with film. Film is art. Art is all about interpretation. And when you try to like put out a product that leans to one side far too often, and I'm looking at you, uh, Captain Marvel. Looking at you in particular. 
you your bland ass false it's just an impersonation of female empowerment in film with your cardboard character leading the charge and it irritates me to no end that individuals well, corporate people i'm just pointing this out because corporate had the nerve and audacity to tell us we're too damn stupid to not understand something that if we said that something was awful that we're terrible people and that makes me furious well Never. hold on to that hold on to that because we're going to come back to captain marvel but the last one more thing about the strike which will make you even angrier if you haven't heard about it already oh no uh, i i'm pretty sure did I... you hear about what universal did no what did universal do oh, oh no uh, uni the universal studios like their universal lot yes they actually okay. got their gardeners to come in and get rid of all of the leaves on all of their trees what the fuck? Huh? So that so that that would provide no shade to the picketers. That's oh my god. Like no, I I, I understand why they did it as soon as you said they cut the leaves off all the trees, but like God damn it, that is that is just okay. cruel no, 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 and inhumane. No. Fuck you. To <laughs> just fuck you all all major studios. If you ever do this to people, fuck you. I am so... Oh, oh yeah. Look, um. I, no, I need to get this out. I need to get this off my chest. I've been brewing with this for days. I am so fucking mad. I never, never in my wildest dreams, never in my... Years of life on this goddamn cesspool of a rock that we live on. That we want to treat other people in my lifetime, treat other people horribly. I always have to try to look for the goodness in people. I try my damnedest to look at the best for people, even those who are. When I know for a fact when someone is morally reprehensible, so goddamn corrupted to their core with how malicious they are, I never, I, I wish them some solace that they can understand the consequences to their actions. But for companies, I don't have that. They are machines. They just want to print money, which is understandable but the real money where it's at it's in the movie theaters that are failing and the reason why a lot of people are failing well one because of the pandemic and two a lot of shoes are just shortchanging these sometimes small town movie theaters that play one movie do you have any idea the upkeeps of some of these people the livelihoods that they have to go through the shit that they go through on a constant basis and they can companies cannot fathom because they're not people they're they're just corp they're entities like cosmic whores from beyond the stars and when they think that they can relate to people that people at the heads who are 10 degrees separated from the common person think that they know what's best for us and they want to treat us like they're the one in the room that has the upper hand that they have the moral high ground no i will not tolerate that shit i will not tolerate the blatant abuse to other human beings. And that's why I hate oh, yeah. modern home. That's why I hate but, 
people who treat others like this. And that's why I have a lot of respect for directors like Nolan, Tarantino, long list. Well, also to add a, uh, to add, to end this news story on a brighter note, um, is, uh, apparently what's going on now is some of the lower studios, lower known studios actually came in and said, yeah, we, we completely agree with what you guys are asking for. Yep. So said, said, okay, we'll give you the exception. And one of those studios being a 24, a 24. Yep. Shout out to a 24. Like, which I yeah. have a lot of respect for a 24. I like, I, yeah, already, and, uh, I, I already like them. They already, like, they put out like a great body of work, but like this, this yeah, really yeah. like won me over. It's like, just mm-hmm. like, it, it showed me that like, there are actually good people behind that studio. And also mm-hmm. one other thing connected to the writer strike, another small story that uh, I want to mention and, you know, give a little spotlight to, uh, the premiere for Oppenheimer happened uh, recently. The Christopher yeah. Nolan movie. Oh yeah, I was going to mention super that. Stack te- uh, with the super stack. Uh, cast and oh, yeah. Nolan and the uh, all, uh, during the red carpet premiere, Nolan and the rest of the cast just walked off. Nolan stayed. Oh, Nolan stayed. Well, the cast walked off. Well, because he's director guild. Too. Oh yeah, right, different guild. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so, but yeah, understand. Killian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr., Emily Blunt. All of them. Florence Pugh, all of them. All of them. Mm-hmm. R.D. fucking J, and, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know awesome? Because here's another thing that gives me a bit of hope. Mm-hmm. Tom fucking Cruise said something that really resonated with me. You know what that is? What is that? They he he went on and on about like uh mission like I think it's for Mission Impossible or Top Gun Maverick. Mm-hmm. Mission so Impossible. Want... It's currently in theaters. Yeah, he was going on and on about wanting to make movies for the fans. Yeah, I mean that's what Top Gun Maverick was. Top Gun Maverick wasn't a soulless remake. It was a passion project because he felt like he still yeah. had a story to tell. And that level of dedication to just wanting giving what the fans of things wanted not what corporations think that fans want and i find that respectable indeed but from tom cruise when it yeah, comes to that you know yeah no like i i mean i i may not agree with that crazy scientologist man about a lot of things but I, here. I really do appreciate like Same. the fact that you know he he straight up said yeah. like you know the only yeah you know people always joke about there are a million Mission Impossibles there are, you know for Vin Diesel there are a million Fast and Furiouses it's not about making money for us like you might you guys might think it is because it's a big franchise or whatever but you know we keep doing it because we love it and the fans love it you know keep showing up yeah like Mm -hmm. if i didn't like enjoy coming into work every day do you think i would nearly kill myself doing all these crazy ass fucking stunts exactly and it 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 just makes me sad because there is a franchise that i love dearly that i know for a fact i will not see the film that's out in theaters now, yep, connected to same, it, same, same, because of what Disney has been doing for the past ten years. <laughs> and it, but you know they're giving away it, free t- t- free tickets to that with an Applebee's yeah. meal. Like that's and how I you know you're desperate. Too. And I'm like, fuck you, no, I ain't seeing that. But I will say one thing that I am seeing is uh, something that I uncovered while doing this. And that was a movie by A24 that I did not realize that was coming out. Mm. It's a completely original one called Death of a Unicorn. 
Ooh. Huh? Okay. It's okay. about a it's about a father and daughter who go out for a drive and accidentally hit and kill a unicorn with their car. Oh shit. Oh gosh. But but here's the twist. The father daughter. Mm-hmm. Paul Rudd. Uh-huh. And Jim Ortega. No! Nice! Hell, hell yeah. So but, uh, that's gonna be interesting. i I'm watching that ASAP for sure. But folks, folks at home, sorry, but not sorry for what had to be said. Listen. It was that needed to be off. Listen, it's a it's a very impassioned rant because like we are not directly involved in the industry, right? We're we're ostensibly just three random guys on the internet. We cover this stuff. We review this stuff. We're critics, mm -hmm. sure. And you mm -hmm. know, a lot of a lot of actors and a lot of people behind shows often say that you know critics don't get it. Critics are just mean. Well, I'm here to just say, as someone who has you know been a critic for over a de uh, critic online for over a decade now and has actually had uh, been able to have conversations with writers for tv shows some showrunners and different things like that very nice amicable conversations i, I just want to say like we went on this these rants because we care and because we get yes. it we are not yes. just you know amateurs who like think that we can make it big or are hoping to break into the industry by sucking up to a cause no we really believe that these artists are being taken advantage of and stepped on and that that just isn't right on a human level so yes that's why we're going to keep covering the writers yeah exactly that's why we no matter them. what we're covering this strike like that's and mm -hmm. also if we have to, we will cover stuff, but if we have to, we'll cover older stuff if it means that the strike can continue to go on and these people can actually get paid what they deserve. Yep. Uh -huh. And but it, but it's part of the reason why my speech was so impassioned is because I was somebody that wanted to be where they were. As a director, as a writer director, I hear you. I mean, same. And I've uh, like uh, you know, uh, I, yeah. I, I, I've me I've mentioned I've mentioned this to Brian, and you know, I, I, I've t I've talked to friends like Cat uh, Comic Uno. Shout out to her, and you know, other mm. other people that I've worked with. One of my biggest dreams was always to to be a a, a TV show uh, showrunner or like head writer for a TV show. Hell, I've had this. Yeah. I've literally had a spec script and pitch for a Power Pack TV show, like. In yeah. my notebook for like five years, and I for me totally hear that. I, for me, I wanted to be a uh, a horror director like Sam Raimi. Like I wanted to yeah. be with the horror greats to learn from. But I just kind of realized at that time that. I know for a fact, given the kind of person that I am, and... Actually, nowadays, horror is actually where your best shot is, because you have studios like A24. Yeah. I mean, yeah, case in point, say what, say what you will about the uh, actual, mm -hmm. actual quality of the film, but uh, look at Blood and Honey. Yep. Very yeah. widely talked about horror film that was independently made yeah but for me at that time though no, this I, was yeah, no like... but I, i'm just talking about no now. i'm yeah i know i, yeah, I get we that are. at that time but we're just talking about now yeah yeah we are now, talking about now well i'm saying well but what i was saying the reason why i chose not to pursue is what just it was a decision i made at that time mm -hmm. i know for independently i can do it if i really had the gumption to but yeah. it was a decision that I made years ago that still hangs over me. And that's why I care about being the type of creative person that I am. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have, I could say, 
the mental scars and just pure un like pure rage that people don't really fully understand. And I mean that people who dreams like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean to get into it from another side, uh, another perspective of this conversation, right? Like, you know, I've been a YouTuber for a very long time, um, and you know, even before I became a creator myself, I was you know a fan since like the very beginning of YouTube, and uh, you know, at, but at the time, at the point where I became a creator was when you know YouTube actually started like blowing up and being uh, you know being brought more into the mainstream. And, you know, one thing that, you know, you saw very much in those early years was YouTube was never taken seriously. You know, oh, they're they're just, uh, uh, don't worry about them. They're just those YouTube kids. Like, you know, say what you want about, like, the Paul brothers or whatever, right? Like, they've done some horrible, like, uh, morally, morally irrehensible shit, like, in their personal lives. But, mm -hmm. you know... One thing I will 100% give them credit for is the fact that no matter how hard people pushed back on them just being dumb YouTube kids, they proved that they can make real content that people want to watch. Jake, um, you know, became an actual professional fighter. Logan, you know, took his, like shit heel personality and character that he created in you know in his content and some of the actions that he did in real life and literally turned himself into a heel for the wwe like hilarious yeah like dude and youtube is the, finally uh, taken seriously company yep and brian mm -hmm. you know brian has uh, you know get, uh, given rave reviews to yeah not rave but yeah oh but I will say, moving on, guys, mm -hmm. this next story is actually kind of tangentially related. Okay. Uh, because of the strike and everything, studios are, especially network TV shows, are mm -hmm. flopping, are uh, scandering for stuff. Um, Fox is doing all reality TV this season. Mm -hmm. And um, they're also doing one other thing. Which is kind of another kick to uh, those who actually paid for it, but uh, they're not. Actually, they're now going to actually start airing streaming stuff on network TV. Oh, that's fucked up. Yeah the the ones the ones that we have confirmed now are uh, Miss Marvel on ABC. Well, eh. Nah. But that could that could also, to be fair, that could also be just them just trying to drum up uh, interest, interest, for, interest, for, the, interest for the Marvels, yeah. Mm -hmm. But CBS though, okay, they're bringing in they're bringing in uh, Yellowstone. Oh, that's a big uh, hit for the uh, for fucking Paramount. Yeah, yeah I. I think SEAL Team is one of them. And then also, uh, they've had a lot of success with their U.S. remake of uh, that show Ghosts. Mm -hmm. So they're going to start airing the U.K. version. Oh, okay. Sh oh, sh oh, shit. Um, that's, that's actually really interesting. Okay. Also, also but, folks, uh, like I mentioned before, and I did give you guys a warning, this is Channel Chaser's raw, unfiltered, and uncut. This is going to be a very long one. I'm staring at the time code right now, and we're definitely going to go way over our usual. Yeah, but these last two stories are going to be a little bit shorter, so... Yeah, one of them is uh, just a... Uh, we got an update of, like, Couple things from the showrunner for The Last of Us okay. TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, he has officially come out and said that uh, uh, three things. One, season two is not going to end how fans think it's going to end. It's not going to go how fans think it's going to go. Thank goodness. Two, okay. 
it's gonna it's gonna split be split into two parts okay makes sense uh right. given the and structure three, of the game i understand why and three unless fans don't show their support and unless it gets bad review and bad ratings their plan is to go for more than two seasons okay that's right. promising all right. Yeah, so maybe our theory could be true. Yeah. Jay. Yeah, honestly, yeah. like if there if there's any franchise that I would like to go off like off script from the source material, yeah, it's definitely the last of us after the first game. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh hey, uh we actually have a new story that brings it back to uh the forgotten news oh also uh, you know if you haven't heard uh if you haven't heard our thoughts on the last of us uh go check go check out that episode it is in it is in the archive uh tony but, pulled uh, an oopsie warning? in that episode but you know yeah it's mostly just jay and me but, yep but anyway uh the last one is the is uh one of the big disappointing stories that we had to cut out because of the mic problems was the Superman legacy announcements. Mm -hmm. Well, after we were recording and everything, they released one more. Okay. Dude, I, I like that look on your face, Brian. I like that look on Michael, your face. Michael Kerrigan, that's his name, mm -hmm. uh, known I believe he got his like big first big break with uh, being Victor Zaz in Gotham. Okay, but just one. It just got himself a uh, best supporting. I believe it's best supporting actor in a comedy series for being in Barry. Oh, cool! Uh, I love Barry. Uh, he's the uh, alopecia bald guy. Oh shit! Guess who he's playing? Who? Metamorpho. Wait, Metamorpho oh, is going to be in this? Hell yeah. Fucking, fucking Rex Mason? Oh, shit. Hell yeah. Yup. And that also means now that we have two out of the four Terrifics. I wonder if Animal, uh, Animal Mineral Vegetable Man is going to be somewhere ch chilling. But, uh, Just vibing. And Gun... Gunn did confirm that uh, all of these castings are not just to like set up a future universe. He's picked these characters on purpose, and mm -hmm. they're going to have like a reason to be there. But also, the main characters are still going to be Clark and Lois. All right, now all I'm waiting for is an actual ginger casting for Jimmy. And Gun well, will have like my, my, my full full support. And one last little thing mm -hmm. about Superman Legacy that Gunn did confirm is uh we don't know yet if if Nathan Fillion is gonna be ginger or not, but Gunn did confirm that he will have a bowl cut. Oh, <laughs> oh. okay, okay. That's progress, but That's still, funny. let's. Just, I, I would like it to be a ginger bowl, uh, a bowl cut. Mm -hmm. I mean, he. But what? like I said, he has a punchable face. Whoever they get to play Batman, Gun. If you don't do that scene, I'm going to be very upset. Anyone who's read JLI, you know the scene. Shit, anybody with a passing knowledge of comic DC Comics should know the scene. I don't have to say mm -hmm. what it is. Exactly. Yeah, it's just yes. utterly. Yes. Uh I actually own that comic just because I want just because I wanted it. Like it, it cost me oh, yeah. twenty dollars for a single issue, well, but I was yeah. like, "Damn it, no! This this moment is iconic. I want it." But that's it for the news, and uh, I need to go take a bathroom break. You can continue without me. All right. Again. All right. 
sorry folks for the yeah. for like the the super long news segment with all the rants and again and all our like you know early segments like i said this is going to be like a, a very long like uncut unfiltered raw episode of channel tasters like literally i'm not gonna throw any edits <laughs> i'm just gonna toss toss the episode in there tony's gonna you know clean up the audio for audio onlys for to fix like dead air and stuff but in terms of cuts none will be in here so yeah, we're gonna move on yeah, from yeah. the news directly into screen time yes folks it's that time again where we discuss some of the things that we have been consuming in between podcast episodes that could be anything from video games to anime to manga to comics other tv shows movies and everything in between uh, so i'll start with me real quick uh like in the uh, previous episode the unicorn episode where i had a bit of a d i had a dc theme unintentionally to my screen time stuff uh this week my theme unintentional theme was actually anime uh so uh related to the channel um like i mentioned before in our um weeb edition episode for oshinoko and uh fate strange fake um, Tony and I will um, be covering at least one show per season that we think is a standout in terms of the new shows. Like, not to say that, like, we're not going to talk about, like, long-running established shows, maybe, but, like, with those, a, lo a lot of other people are going to cover them, and, you know, we, we don't really have, uh, if we're not really going to add anything to the conversation, there's no point in us talking about it, uh, but, uh, the anime that I, you know, threw to Tony that I think we should cover for the summer season uh, is one that just started recently, uh, which, you know, when we do the YouTube video, I'm not going to be able to include this title in the YouTube, in the video itself, uh, but it is called Undead Girl Murder Farce. And essentially the premise is it's this alt history Edo Japan where... Basically, the Emperor has decreed we must kill all yokai in order to properly, you know, execute westernization and, you know, propel Japan's progress into the new era. And so, you know, they're, they're exterminating all the yokai, and we have our main character, who is half Oni, and he works for this, like, circus where he, like, you know, fights and kills other yokai. And he, a long story short, he ends up getting roped into this deal where he'll get freed of his curse, which is like his Oni side fully taking over and him becoming like a full demon. Uh, if he can uh, fi uh, finally find a way to manage to kill this Im uh, other immortal yokai. Uh, who uh, ends up becoming his friend along the way to try and find this, uh, to solve this mystery of how she became immortal, why, and how to kill her. Uh, it's re it's got great action so far, and the animation is great. Uh, the guy behind it, in terms of, like, directing and, you know, he's also one of the head animators for the show is the man who uh gave us the gem that is kaguya sama love is war the anime adaptation so uh if you like that style it's very much in that vein it looks beautiful the action is stellar i like the characters a lot i definitely think this is one to look out for and this is definitely one we'll be covering on the channel uh later at some point uh, the other anime I checked out is something else I pitched the boys that I want us to cover for the podcast this time, and it's something that we reacted to in a previous trailer talk, My Happy Marriage, the Netflix uh, anime series that is out. Uh, it does a like simul-dub weekly release. I Which checked it out. I, mm -hmm. So did I. I actually watched uh not only the first two episodes but the episode that came out today oh the third one i didn't watch episode oh. three bro because i because i look i don't like wait I, I don't like waiting week to week man i can't handle it i can't handle bro. it 
Let me tell you the anxiety I feel. That's what I'm saying. That's why I was like, nope, nope. I'm, like, I'm not going to allow myself to get invested yet because if but, I do, but, it's going to give me anxiety to have to wait week to week. I, I, I'm all the way fucked up about it because I'm committed to watching this show weekly. You're, be you're a better one than me. You're a better one than me. I can't look, do it. Girl. When I feel bad for our leading lady, and it's just like, what's best for this girl? Come on, yeah. man. No, and I, I gotta, I gotta tell you guys, like, for real, uh, the trailer really undersells what the anime is actually about. It which really I'm, does. Which I'm not gonna really spoil does. because I again I want us to cover this for the podcast, but just take my word for it. The trailer really undersells what the anime is actually about. And to like give you an elevator pitch description of the anime without going into any plot details, this is like Violet Evergarden meets ancient Ma uh, ancient Magus Bride. If you've watched either of those two shows. Hopefully you've watched Agent Magus Bride, because Agent Magus Bride was amazing. But I'm sure a lot of people saw Violet Evergarden and, and cried countless and countless pools of tears. Oh, God. Uh, Don't even get uh, me started about the movie that also made me cry countless pools well, of tears. Me, it, I had big cry. I mean, Jay, we may not have watched Violet Evergarden together, mm -hmm. but also another great show and movie that you, me, and Jordan watched together. Oh yeah, the Bunny Girl Senpai movie. Oh, that was a that was an experience. Oh, Jordan and folks. Our friend Jordan is a man that oh has always said he does not want to cry. Yeah. When and, it comes to you know, he's he's generally not like a not like serious as in like unfun, but because we're because he's been friends with me for so long and I'm so extra, there has to be like a straight man. Otherwise, it's just too chaotic. And And then when you mean to the mix it makes it even a bit worse. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Jordan is like the straight man of our friend group. And mm -hmm. so, like, you know, the three of us are huge weeps, you know, that's the whole reason we did the, the We Warriors podcast, you know, previously on Tony's channel. And mm -hmm. we watched the Money Girl Senpai movie together in the Discord, not like in a voice chat, but we were like messaging each other in a group chat on Discord while we were watching it at the same time. And mm -hmm. we were all just all kinds of fucked up. The fact that Jordan even admitted, he's like, yo, I ugly cried. I fucking ugly cried, dog. Yeah, I'm like, god damn, man. Oh, man. But yeah, no, like, it. this show has... I can already tell it's going to build up to some Violet Evergarden feels. And... Oh. Just it's gonna be some on ancient Magus Bride wholesomeness. It's like, no, from what I can see, it's a mix of all of that, but also on that same Violet Evergarden fuck shit. Oh yeah, that we, you know. Oh yeah, and, no, I, I feel that too. I feel that too. Yeah. But yeah, Let definitely me... check out My Happy Marriage though. It's it's great. Although if you're like me and like you know wanting to protect your you know precious anime girls, like. And, you know, worrying about them gives you anxiety. Do not watch this week to week. It will, it, it will, it will ruin your soul. Don't make the mistake my friend did. Yeah. It, j it, j j just be patient and wait for it to wrap. Yes, or you could be like me and just deal with your anxieties to make sure you go into that full must protect moment because... <laughs> I, I I have to say it, half sister, little bitch. I have to say it, little bitch. Mhm. Mm yeah. Jay, you know. I mean, she is like. Look, I'm not. I, I, we're not again. Not gonna get into like plot details here, but yeah, she's the fucking worst. Uh, and I I, I I want her to go die in a hole, but <laughs> we'll nah. get there. <laughs> I, I just want her to get her comeuppance. I, I, I don't want her dead. 
necessarily die in a hole, but I I ain't you, but <laughs> I mean I, I'm not say, I'm not saying I like entirely want it to happen, but you know if it did, I wouldn't be upset about it. Is what I'm saying. All right. So you like you said you've been on this anime kick. What else have you seen? Oh yeah, recently, yeah. man. So the, the so the third so the third anime was uh mostly just like a like a fun rewatch. Uh, because I had I had this idea uh, for another project that I'm working on with the guys, so I decided to rewatch this to kind of like um, like help me with this idea. And this was the uh, Fate Grand Order Camelot movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had my problems with Camelot. And it's adaptation if you're an FGO fan or you follow me on my Twitch content or my, you know, Twitch highlights channel, Mr. JVT. You'll know that uh, I had problems with the adaptation for Camelot, but watching it again, turning off my, like, analytical critic brain and just watching it as a fan, the movie's great. Uh, it still holds up to me. Ar Arash's moment is beautiful. And, like, I'm glad they took the time to give that justice. Uh, I really like how they focus on our, like, Artoria's character struggle with, uh, with why she, you know, in the singularity, you know, made the choices she did. Uh, and, like, you know, had her knights act the way that they did. Um, it was it was really well done. The voice acting in the dub, which is I, I watched the dub because I only watched the movie in sub. I watched the dub for the first time, and the dub is spectacular. Honestly, all the fate dubs are really great, and uh, I I just I, I really enjoyed the movie, man. I really enjoyed it. Like, I I gave it a, a hard time the first go around, but like I, I've definitely come around to it. Have you seen the Camelot movie, Tony? Uh, I think I've seen parts of the Camelot movie, but oh yeah, no, you Ooh. you definitely you uh we de then we definitely gotta like sit down together and watch it sometime at some point. Because um, I recall like seeing Arash's big moment, and I'm like, God damn, bro. Yeah, no, it was fun. it was fucking beautiful. The, the the like the only small critiques that I have is that like you know that they rush past some scenes that I really like. Um, like I wish Ozzy had been given more time because he's such a presence. But it, you know, honestly, I could make a whole fucking video, and we're not going to do that because we're already going long. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Tony. Well, what have you mm -hmm. uh, what have you been uh, consuming in between podcast episodes? Well, I actually had a bit of an anime kick myself. Like I said, I saw My Happy Marriage just to play catch up with that and committed to watching it week to week. Decided to also watch just for a bit of my own personal writing project to really get into the mindset of a character for the sake of comedy. Rewatched one of my favorite dumb comfort anime of all time the 12 minute an episode classic aho girl uh, uh, jay hates it jordan and i fucking love it <laughs> i i do i do look that there, there, there's only there's a limit there's a limit to idiot energy that i can take and I don't know, it, it just pushes a little over it for me. But I'm happy you guys enjoy it. Yeah, because it, I find... Because I actually had a bit of inspiration. Like, I need to get a certain scene right. Mm -hmm. That would be just... Well, that would be a funny idea to work with. And our leading dumbass, Yoshiko... How she interacts with the local uh, children. Oh, uh, okay. I'll, I'll admit that was funny. I'll admit so, that was funny. Akun's sister, Ruri, to the kids at the playground with fucking... Okay, folks. I'll be real with you. 
this is a this character is picture of valley girl times 15 but take away like the parts that make valley girls fun put them in a japanese google uniform give them long twin tails you get Yoshiko. Absolutely nothing between the ears. Just say. Yep. No thoughts, head empty, only cares about bananas. And not uh. like that, her hurts. Uh. Uh. I mean You're the one who said it. No, I mean he got he's gotta clarify. Well look. We, I, I know my audience, and that he didn't need to say it. Exactly. Also, when a girl is so dumb that she names her dog Dog, it only worked. It only it only worked for Annie in Kong Skull Island. Yes. Dog, That's the dog only... is dog is best boy. Don't fight. Yeah, don't yeah. at me. Also. I decided to pick up a few shows that I haven't watched it because I had to put it on the now shared uh, Crunchyroll watch list. One of my favorite uh, Tenchi series came back, uh, Tenchi Muno GXP. Oh, really? Like Yeah, it did. They, they did like a reboot? Not a reboot, but just a continuation. Oh, it's a kind continuation. Of... See, I saw yeah. it on the queue, and I thought you were just like rewatching like old gxp if i want to rewatch old gxp i just open up my dvd oh, that i okay. have of it i didn't know it was a continuation i'm gonna have to check that out holy <laughs> shit no uh Sena looks older and i'm like holy oh, shit wow hmm. yeah that, that's the crazy thing but and also uh fuku is older oh shit so that, that tipped me off and uh a few of the other uh, <laughs> characters are older. I haven't watched it yet, but I can just tell from like the uh, promo image. I'm like, holy shit! They aged up quite a few characters. Oh, real quick, uh, the other there was one more anime show that I forgot to mention that uh, also uh, I I checked out um, because I did not know that a dub was out because I thought they only posted this on the official Gundam YouTube channel. Uh, Gundam the Witch from Mercury, a show that I absolutely loved when it came out a couple seasons ago. It is, uh, the English dub is out, and that's on Crunchyroll. Yeah. And it's phenomenal. Uh, it's been out. Yeah, I, I did, I was unaware, because I've been watching the, the subs on the official Gundam YouTube channel. So, I was, yeah, I didn't know until... Shout out to David. David told me. Uh, yeah, it's fucking great. Uh, mm -hmm. I love Witch from Mercury. Uh, I've never been as big of a Gundam guy as my pops is. But this, this right here, th that's my shit. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, got, it's got romance. It's got intrigue. It's got, you know, the cool robot fights. It's got the still the, the, the political, uh, you know, political themings and, you know, espionage, sabotage. All that shit that you would expect from Gundam, it's it's great. Now that I'm adult, an adult, and I can I understand the like machinations of politics, I can actually enjoy Gundam, and uh, it's really good. Oh, and finally, the show that I actually saw a bit today, and I'm happy that I did because it is so damn cute. Is Everyone's new anime to shit on because of a certain character design, My Tiny Senpai. Oh, I I saw the fuss about that on Annie Twitter. Because we have a short stack, folks. Yep, it's always the short girls that get like real like the, the the like the real bad like backlash from anime Twitter. I don't I don't know what it is. It's not like, you know, short uh, well-endowed short girls don't exist in real life, but I mean, it, it's because of the of the art style and 
I could get into a whole. Yeah, lot, but... no, no, that like that. That's a whole separate brand. But this is not a Weeb Warriors episode, yeah. and we're not gonna. So we're not gonna take that. We're not gonna take the light away from Brian. Uh, yeah, but all I'm saying is that get the get the thoughts of what Twitter is saying. This show is wholesome. It is fantastic. It's super cute. Our our <laughs> leading lady is adorable. She is she yes, she is indeed a short stack. But she is also a cat lover and a bit of a goofball. She's very she's goofy. Great. Yeah, oh she's adorable. And also, one thing I love about characters like this, they she does the cat face. Yep. It's a very simple like thing for me, but I like when anime characters make the cat face. It's great. Same. Same. And this character, she makes the most adorable cat faces you'll ever see. I'm not, I I'm not even a cat person, and I'm not, I'm gonna admit that's a that's a you know that's a soft spot of mine when it comes to like anime characters. I mean, I'm a cat dog person, so I like both. I mean, you can't see him, but my cat is laying on the top of my couch right now, so I'm looking at him. No, nah, so I've never been a, I've never been a cat person because mostly because when I was when I was little, uh, uh, my my uncle who was the uh, like my great uncle who owned the apartment that we lived in, in the city, he had a bunch of cats and they were assholes. Like they were very mean to me, so, like that just gave me a just a bad opinion of cats overall. <laughs> I like cats. I've met some nice cats. My friend, all my friends have very nice cats. I have no problem with my friend's cats, but it's just rando cats that I don't trust. Well, they say cats will, like, mimic the demeanor of their owner. Mm -hmm. And my cat, he naps as much as I do. I was going to say, so your cat's a stubborn asshole? Yes. And he also runs away when people are yeah. uh, not through the house. All right. Okay. So, Brian, what have you been consuming in between podcast episodes? I'm sorry for well, our, like, extended weave out. Nah, it's fine. I've got a couple of things. Um, I just started because um, it's like a casual watch show. I hadn't like felt like I needed to marathon it, but I have started watching that show Ghosts, the American oh, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, the the, the one that's oh. on Paramount Plus. We yeah. reacted to the trailer to that, right? I think maybe that like that um, like that's the one where like the high school girl gets killed. No, no, wait, no, that one's not Ghost. For some reason, no, because you know, because it's about Ghost. I thought the title was Ghost. No. Ghosts is about a young couple, uh, the chick from my zombie, and the Indian guy from Pitch Perfect. Mm. They inherit a house that belonged to her great aunt or some distant family member mm -hmm. who left the house to her. Okay. And while they're exploring and everything, uh, she has an accident, and when she wakes up from the accident, she can see all the ghosts that live in the house. I would not be able to deal. I'm going to be real with you. And, well, the ghosts are not like scary ghosts. They're just like normal people. No, I mean, the, but, the, the, re the reason I would not be able to deal is because if they're ghosts, they have unfinished business, which means they're going to complain all the fucking time, and I don't have time oh, yeah. for that. Oh, yeah. They do do that. Um, and uh, like... they, they all come from different times, like, because the rule is that they're just, they died in the house or in the house area mm -hmm. and are just stuck there for some reason, unfinished business and all. But we do have one guy who um, who actually comes from, like, colonial times and, like, 
knew of Hamilton, and he like gets jealous when he finds out all the shit that Hamilton. <laughs> It's like, wait, his banging system worked? He got a Broadway musical? What's Broadway? Yep. Oh, what? That's crazy. Meanwhile, meanwhile, this guy is a footnote in one paper, and he died of dysentery. Oh, <laughs> me and Tony made that joke a while ago. Ah, oh, dysentery. And, uh, Enemy of and, everyone uh, Tony, from the past. You'll get a kick out of this. This uh -huh. colonial guy is uh, played by the head of the support group on Renfield. <laughs> oh, so it's that uh, one fella. Okay. Uh. But also, he's very uh, closeted gay. I mean... And admires the husband at several times. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, they all but... come from different times. Uh, there's one... One of my favorites is a uh, flower who's a hippie and uh, she died because she was technically on the land and got killed by a bear. Oh, damn. That's rough. And, and then, but the first ever person that ever like haunted that area was, um, I believe his name is Thorg. And uh, he's a Viking. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, like, straight up Viking. And the. I won't spoil how everyone dies, but the Viking, it's because he had a metal hammer and it was storming outside. Oh, shit. So he got but, struck by lightning while holding on to his hammer. Yes. I feel like Jesus. that could also be a euphemism. Yes. But, uh,. It's funny, though. It's funny, like, their interactions with them. And also the fact that only she can see him and the husband can't. Mm -hmm. So she'll, like, come into the room and start talking to him, and, he's, and he tries to address her, and she's like, no, I'm talking to the ghost. And he's like, great. Can I now get just get a roll call anytime you walk into a room? <laughs> yeah. He's uh, really funny. He he's a big selling point. I mean, and like the uh the actor, I forget what her name is, but like the uh the Yellow Ranger from RPM yeah. slash uh, Rose Liv Me Rose Mc yeah Rose Mc no Rose McGallagher is somebody else. Yeah, it's Rose something, but yeah, yeah. Ye Yellow RPM Ranger slash uh, Liv Moore from mm -hmm. iZombie. She has really great comedic chops. If you watched iZombie, so. Like oh, I, yeah. I definitely think this show, uh, like is uh, w will be worth a watch. I'm gonna check it out at some point. Yeah, I've been meaning to. Um, for Halloween, they have a tradition mm -hmm. where uh they dress up as the step brothers. Oh, nice! Do they... Because it it's a it's a funny couple's costume that they can do that doesn't objectify her. But do they? But do they go into? But do they go into the garage and do karate? No, they have other stuff that they deal with. Ah, uh, because the ghost, the ghosts don't like Halloween because of stereotypes. Yeah, but uh, it's it's funny show, but it's like offhand watch. Like you don't have to marathon it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. J just a kind uh, of like a pick me up type. Like ah, I feel like watching this today. Yeah. Uh. Then I watched um, Knives Out, thanks yep. to a buddy of ours. Yep, yep. And it What'd it was think? really good. Mm -hmm. I thought the it's weird to say it's semi spoiler, but uh, it's like when half the truth is revealed. It mm -hmm. feels a little awkward until the real truth is revealed. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I feel like that was intentional, but I, I totally yeah. felt the, that way too when I first saw the movie. But but I will say that everyone did a great job, uh, especially Chris Evans. And also, uh, she's definitely becoming a like chameleon. Anna DeArmas? Oh yeah, no, she was great. 
Yeah, but you wouldn't recognize the fact that uh, she was uh, the last Bond girl. Yeah, I had to. I, I, I had to look. I had to look in the uh, in the credits, and I was like, "Wait, I've seen this name before." And I was like, "Oh, it's you! Wow!" Which, also, funnily enough, her and Chris Evans just worked together again for that Apple movie Ghost. Oh, did wow. Yeah, where the plot is that they go on a blind date. It, it, she kind of ghosts him, and so he goes to investigate what's going on with her and comes to find out she's a secret agent. That's a mad, unrealistic movie. No one on Earth would ever ghost Chris Evans. But, uh, but yeah, he plays a normal guy in that. Still, so it's really he, cool. he's a normal guy that looks like Chris Evans. Well, from what I understand from the trailer, the reason why she ghosted him is like she because he got captured or something. Ah, okay, that's that, was, then that's valid. You, 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 she was too into the mission. You get you get a pass, but like, because I was I was about but, to say what ghost Chris Evans, huh? The big, the big thing, the biggest thing that I partaked during this whole time is uh, I finished it. I don't know if it would if i first mentioned it in a forgotten episode but i finished the audiobook uh fourth wing oh cool i think it was a i think it was a lost episode i believe that was in the love and death episode well, well what it's about is it's i can go into full like plot synopsis for it now mm-hmm. uh, our main character violet um, lives in this world where it's fantasy. I think it has like some little modern things to it, kind of similar to Nimona. Okay. But not as far as Nimona. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, uh, the main thing is that there's this college, this military college, where um, you go to it for three years, I think, and you get split up into... Four quad, four quadrants. They split it up. Okay. Healers, healers, writers, infantry, and scribes. But wait, our main. Okay, so our so our, it's a real quick question: Are the riders like cavalry, or it's like dragon riders? Oh, okay. But are they cavalry? But are they treated as cavalry? What do you mean? You not you don't know what cavalry is in terms of like military structure? You know, cavalrymen, the you know the dudes that you know used to charge in on horses with the sabers and well and now nowadays well, it's it's more of like the the motherfuckers who like come in in the armored vehicles and blow shit up. Yeah, kind of, but they're also like the main military force of this world. I mean, yeah. Uh, infantry but, is the is the main for us, but again, that's just fucking. But yeah, our main dog. our main character, uh, her father was a scribe, and her mother is the general that runs the school and is a writer, and her sister is a writer. Her brother was a writer, but he's dead. Well, no, her brother was a healer, but he's dead. Ironic, and then. Yes. And then she's growing up all of her life preparing to step into her father's footsteps and become a scribe. Well, then her father dies. And after two family members die, her mom gets a little crazy and it's like, everyone in our family is writers. We've always been writers. So at the last minute, she tells her, you're going to be a writer. Because everybody who hasn't, who wasn't died. Okay. That makes sense in a leap in logic kind of way. Yeah, but also this world is a uh, very and so her whole thing is that she's got to survive this school and learn how to do all this when all of her life was trained for something else and just learn to survive and not just survive from the dragons and stuff, 
but also the fact that uh, there are a couple people who may or may not want her dead because huh. of the the sins of the parent type situation that's with her actually, mother. That's actually very similar to the uh, human character in the Thrawn uh, in the first Thrawn book. That's really interesting. Huh. Yeah, and so this this whole book takes place like in her first year of school. But it has a lot of tropes like enemies to lovers, a love triangle that goes interesting ways. Uh there is one side character who um is semi your favorite trope, Jay, but we don't get to learn too much about her, at least in the first book. Is she blonde? Usually, usually this trope ha- always ends up making them a blonde girl. Actually, no. Oh, yay! It, she's got purple hair. Cool! Her name is Imogen. Nice. Oh! Uh, which is I, kind of... I actually, uh, a, a character that I really liked from one of the later seasons of Degrassi was named Imogen. But it's also kind of ironic because currently in Critical Role, there's a character named Imogen with purple hair. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing too, Brian. Yeah, that's. I knew you were going there. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's um, it's really cool. Uh, one of the one of the uh, love triangle people is her uh, childhood best friend. And the other one is the son of the uh, former resistance leader. Ah, that's the enemy's lovers one. Got it. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe it or not, it's actually like, this book is actually quite a, like Game of Thrones esque deadly, where uh, because they actually go into the whole thing of uh, how dangerous it would be to ride dragons. Yeah, I mean, and sometimes you just fall off. I mean, you, I mean, we we all wa- we all watched and did an episode covering House of the Dragon. So, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, going, um, back, going back to round two. Oh boy. Yeah, that actually happens a lot, like dragon on um, dragon fight stuff and all that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's actually really good where you, you really get to see her inner monologue and stuff. But one of the twists is the way that dragons and dragon riders work is uh, the dragon has to pick you. And then when they do, you're bonded for life. Oh, so Aragon. Yeah, but uh, they actually can, like, listen to each other's thoughts. Aragon. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it is, but it's more gruff, and uh, her well, the, dragon, like... The, 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 look, the movie might not have been gruff, but the books were pretty gruff. <laughs> but yeah, it's, but it's just a world with Aragons, it's not just one person. There's more than one dragon rider in the later books. Oh no, this, this book, like, has, like, 20 plus. Oh yeah, no, there's not, there's not 20 plus, but I'm just saying, it's not just Aragon. Yeah, I hear you, but, uh, but yeah, the world, it, it, because the dragon can talk, though, and telepathically talk, is, uh, she'll be, like, narrating the scene and saying her inner thoughts, and then the dragon, like, interrupts her, like, don't think like that, or fuck you mean, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, uh, doesn't say those exact words, but... Yeah, but ge- the general vibe. Yeah, no, I get it, I get it. And also, all of these people have, like, a, a unique power that comes... From uh, bonding with a dragon, but I'm not gonna repeat they channel it. it. I'm not gonna repeat it. I've already said it like twice. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it ranges in wild stuff like uh, astral projection, cryokinesis. One dude has control over shadows. That's One literally dude... the bad guy from Eric <laughs> Well, he's not a bad guy. I know, but I'm just saying... Oh man! And then one dude, one dude uh, has like a supervision, like in super seeing. So like Legolas but, in the Lord of the Rings films, but like a supernatural level. I mean, like he, he's it's an, kind of X Men. Oh, I was like, he's an elf. Doesn't that technically inherently make it supernatural? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this dude can like see like far away for a human. Um, but anyway, it's like everyone's got their own unique little ability, like Axeman. Ah. Uh, I won't say what the main character is, because it's kind of a plot point. But, uh, because of course it is, because they don't do the, like, chosen one thing, but they do do the, uh, this main person is unique and special. That's basically the chosen one thing. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean. They don't, like, call her the Chosen One, and it's not, like, written in the stars that she's meant to lead them. I mean, yeah, same with, uh, same with Aragon. I I hear you, dude. This uh, definitely has a lot of inspiration from several other things. I mean, like, look, I, I, I kept doing the Aragon thing as a bit, but honestly, Aragon is literally just Star Wars with dragons. Well, this this is kind of like uh, the best way to describe it for me. For me, is uh, the first Divergent mixed with How to Train Your Dragon, with a little bit of uh, Attack on Titan, and um, extra spiciness. That is a very strange concoction <laughs> you described, but I'm intrigued. That's a funny little cocktail that you put together there, Brian. All right. And in hour three, well, um, we are jumping into trailer talk. My bad. Sorry, I was just going to add on to it because I do need to warn people. Uh-huh. This is a spicy book. Yeah. Wear headphones. Yes. And I mean that because uh, when we first initially said it, and I said new adult, and Jay said like a... Uh, like a house of uh No, Crescent City. It was Crescent City. It's Crescent City. Yeah, the first Crescent City book. Yep. I was trying to remember its exact name. Yeah, how, oh, I think anyway. it's House uh House of Blood and Earth. House of Blood and Earth. Yeah, House of Blood and Earth. But this goes more descriptive and and deeper. Pun intended. I don't know. Than... I don't know, oh, man. Oh, I don't know, oh, man. No. <laughs> I don't know, man. Crescent City got real, real descriptive. Like, so descriptive that, like, listening to that audiobook gave me new techniques. Oh, like, you learned shit, didn't you? I did. Like, well, this gets George, damn needs near ta- descriptive. George needs to take lessons from Sarah J. Moss, for real. Um, and Rebecca like, Yaros. Um... um but uh, let's just say that uh, they actually start counting something from her. Okay. Oh, interesting. Interesting. If you're catching what I'm saying I'm without get, saying because of YouTube. I, I am aware. I am aware. I, but, I, I uh, picked up what you put down. But, I'll, but uh, I will say that all the description that she gives to the spicy scenes... She also gives to the action scenes. And there's one action scene that literally lasts in the audiobook an hour. Holy shit. Oh, Mm -hmm. what? Damn, that's impressive. This is like a 20 hour book. I'm gonna have to for the audiobook. I'm gonna have to check this out when I get an audible. Also, credit. also, um, the sequel is coming out this November. Oh, cool! Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah, I'm gonna have to check this out when I get and an audible. And that's credit. it for me. 
All right. Can you uh, can you put that uh link that book so I can listen to it there, Brian? Yeah, just drop it in the group chat. That that way that way I can I, I can look it up when I also get an audible credit. And I, you know, this is a repeated running joke in the podcast, but Audible, if you're listening, we use the service. Mm -hmm. Your ad could go here. But yeah, uh, as I said before, and in hour three, we move on to trailer talk. That is the segment of the show where our good friend Brian has curated a playlist of trailers which you can find in the description down below youtube people and we are going to quickly react to them and then return with our rapid fire thoughts and this time i really do mean rapid fire because like i said we are in hour three and i'm not editing any of this down oh my god all right brian tell the folks at home what we will be reacting to tonight you might want to do some editing no, nah, I'm keeping it all. I'm keeping it all. And plus, with an episode this long, editing this will cause me to pull my hair out. So, no. Well, I had to pause to do what you told me to. That's fine. I just did. We'll keep it in. Tony can cut that out in the audio version, but it still works uh, for the flow but, of videos. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, um... We're starting off with, um... An action movie called uh, The Retirement Plan. All right. Uh, and it's basically about a girl who her and her daughter get caught up in some mob shit and have to turn to her, her beach bum dad to help them. All right. Interesting premise. But the cast is where it gets crazy, and I'll let you guys see that. All right. Curious. And then uh, The List, which is a romantic comedy coming up, um, starring a person from uh, pre-recording, uh, uh, Anara, Alara from uh, Orville. Oh, nice! And uh, the, premise, the premise is that... Uh, Wait, I'm, I, I, I'm, I might be confusing them. Is Alara the one that was in the first season, or was she, no? Yeah, because Kiali is the is the second one. Yeah, yeah, it was Alara yeah. was the one from the uh, the earlier seasons. Okay, the, the earlier one. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's engaged to this. I believe they're engaged to this guy, and then she finds out that uh, he actually did meet up with and actually slept with uh, someone on his. Uh, Celebrity Hall Pass list? Yep. Oh, oh, shit. Good for him. And so now oh, she's uh, she's uh, out for revenge and wanting to sleep with... Trying to sleep with one of hers. Oh, cool. Who I believe is uh, played by uh, Christian Navarro. Oh, nice. From um, 13 Reasons Why and also most recently did a stint on Critical Role. Yeah, no, he's cool. Uh, I, I like I like Tony. And then uh, The Holdovers, which is a new movie done by the same director as uh, Sideways. Oh, cool. And it also has Paul Giamatti in it. And uh, what it's about is it's about at like this uh, boys boarding school where uh, it's uh, Christmas time. And uh, like it focuses on the people that don't have a home to go back to. Oh, so like the Harrys. Yeah, it's called The Holdovers. Mm -hmm. Then we have a movie called Outlaw Johnny Black. All right. Y'all ever hear about that? No. It, it, the long... it, is it an actual Western? Yep. Okay, now I'm more intrigued. Written, I believe, directed by and starring... None other than Michael Jai White. Oh, shit. We're getting oh. Black Dynamite as a cowboy? Hell yeah. Yep. Then um, Prime Video has a new show coming out called, uh, called uh, Harlan 
Coben's shelter, where it's about this dude who uh, his father is dead, his mom is in rehab, and he goes to live with his aunt in, in New Jersey. Ew. And, Sorry. Uh, Native reaction. He gets approached by a woman, an old woman who may or may not be dead, who tells him that his father isn't dead. And so now he goes on like a like mystery thing to find out what happened to his dad. Is his dad really dead? Mystery kind of show, intrigue oh. thing. Okay, cool. Based on a YA book. Um. Also, then, I mean no disrespect to any Jerseyans out there. Y'all, I'm sure y'all are very nice people. It's just, you know, I'm from the city, and the, the, that was just a, uh, just a fucking reflex response. Mm-hmm. Then, um, we've got an upcoming uh, Netflix sh- show, which we might actually cover, oh. called, uh, Met Cadets. So are these Mecha Cadets? It's... Yep, it's uh, based on uh, a Boom Studios comic of the same name. Oh, I don't, I don't think I've heard of it. I believe Frank Cho wrote it. Oh, really? Like Frank Cho, the artist who's like famous for drawing like cheesecake and oh. in particular like ass. No, no, I got it wrong. Yeah, I got it wrong. My bad. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I used to have who wrote it written down but we've gone on too long for me to look it back up sorry they might say it in the trailer because i got the trailer from boom studios is uh youtube oh cool cool and one thing of note about it is uh one of the cadets is uh an amputee so they got a real life amputee to voice him oh that's awesome yep Uh, then we got a migration which is illumination's next movie it's about a family of ducks with uh, Kamel Donjiani as the dad who have never gone on migration before and now have decided to finally spread their wings and try try it out and hijinks from soon. I'm honestly not interested because Illumination is kind of just a uh, kid's movie factory. The- I, I get you. I saw the trailer already. Because it was a maybe list for me. Mm-hmm. And I think it's decent. Um, All right. But then the last one, the last one is something else we could cover. It's uh, from Netflix. It's also from Netflix called The Monkey King. <gasps> All right. Continue, an, damn it. It's an animated movie. About continue, the tale of the damn it. King. Oh, it's filled with a bunch of uh, familiar uh, Asian actors with a uh, Freddie Freddie Wong. Uh, I believe that's his name. All right, voicing the Monkey King himself. The, the only thing I ask is that Michelle Yao be the voice of Quan Yin, because whenever I, I whenever I like see. Anything that is like talking about Journey to the West, even the OSP, uh, like retellings of Journey to the West, whenever Quan Yin comes up, I always like read it in the voice of Michelle Yao. It's inspired by the epic Chinese tale, translated into an action packed comedy, a monkey and his magical fighting stick battle demons, dragons, gods. And the greatest adversary of all himself, the monkey's e- ego. Yep. Uh, also, fun fact, slight spoiler: the dragon is also a horse. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was wrong. The main, the main actor who's playing the Monkey King mm-hmm. is a uh, Jimmy Yang. Oh, cool. But yeah, I fucking love Journey to the West. I mean, and it's not just because and, I'm a Dragon Ball fan. Uh, I just legit love that story. Um, and uh, it doesn't look like Michelle Yao is in this. Wasted opportunity. But but her on-screen do- daughter is. 
Oh, Stephanie Hsu. Sweet. Who, who, and also who she in played? This, who she played? Who she played? It says on IMDb that she's playing Mayor's wife. Mayor? The fuck? Okay. But but the other thing that I want to say real quick about the voice cast before we watch it is uh OG voice actor from uh Mulan. BD Wong. Oh shit. You know, and he I, actually I is for, playing I somebody. I forgot he was Shang. I only really like I so like permanently associate BD Wong with both SVU and Mr. Robot that I completely forget that he is also the voice of Shang. He was also in uh, Jurassic Park. Oh yeah, that's true. But uh but uh whatchamacallit, uh he actually plays somebody of note. Uh Pigsy? The Buddha. Oh yeah. The yep, big man that's himself. The reason why I saved that one for last. Alright, cool. I'm excited for that. But yeah. Uh, we'll be back, folks, and uh, if you've been listening or watching this entire time, first of all, thank you. And if you've been lis- and if you've been watching this whole time, uh, here's a cookie. Uh, clearly, you like us enough to watch us for three hours, so please hit that like button. And subscribe if you want more. Uh, but we shall return very quickly uh, with our rapid-fire thoughts on these trailers. But until then, go get your snacks, go use the bathroom, take your breaks. This is your intermission. And we're back with refreshments. Hashtag not spawned. So, we just watched uh, an entire playlist of trailers. Once again, Brian, this was uh, a set of bangers. One dud, but mostly bangers. Well, semi dud. I didn't like it that much. Yeah. Uh, but we'll get there. Uh, what I did like, Monkey King looks badass as fuck. I'm into that. Mecha pilots, yes please. Or mecha cadets, yes please. I'm down with that. Uh, I okay. One thing I hate about uh mecha cadets, it comes out on a, a former uh, anniversary I had with an ex, so that's a bit of a sound. But that's okay. I can get over it. Ah, just listen to Drops of Jupiter. You'll be fine. Yeah, fair enough. But I, I, no, I would be having mechas beating the shit out of kaiju also, to get over that. Yeah, also true. That is a good. That is a good cure for the blues. Um, that Paul Giamatti movie. I thought it was going to go one way, and then it took a hard left in the best way. Yeah. Oh that yeah. Was some good. I'm in. Uh, like, Indeed. I kind of want to see that. That fe- this, this feels like a surprisingly feel-good film. Yep, I yeah. agree. And uh, I agree too. Also, I just Google it. Uh, the comic that Met Cadets was based upon was uh, written by Greg Pak. And uh, oh, I know why you got Cho- Frank Cho because Frank Cho and Greg Pak did the Amadeus Cho. Uh, totally awesome. Yeah. Book. Yeah, but Greg Park and Takashi Miyazawa. Oh, Miyazawa? Dude, Miyazawa is, like, one of the best artists uh, fucking working in comics right now. Miyazawa has great fucking art. Um, she did. She but, did. She did some stuff for Marvel. I think she's doing a little bit for Night Terrors. It's great. Uh, anyways, uh, the... The one with the the one with the kid who like whose uh, dad died the Prime Video show, that looks yeah. really intriguing. Uh, I'm I'm very interested mm-hmm. in that. Um, mm-hmm. The retirement Nick Cage. That's all I need to say. That's all anybody yeah. needs to know. Nick Cage versus Ron Perlman. So yes, mm-hmm. yes, and more yes. Enough said. Um, yeah. What else? Are we missing anything? Are we missing anything? Yeah, the migration. migration. Okay, that one was meh. Like, I'm okay. Look, I know it's a kids' movie, but like, as somebody who like really likes animals and read a lot of zoo books as a kid, I was sitting there. I was sitting there like, all right, that doesn't make any sense. 
that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't. I mean, like, okay, I get it. Cartoon kids movie, no logic. Yeah. But like, also, well, you know, mm-hmm. I just I, don't know, I, I didn't find you. any. I, I also didn't say, find any of the jokes funny either. I I will say I did find one funny, and the soundtrack was good. Oh yeah, I mean it's Pharrell Williams. You can't go wrong with Pharrell Williams. Pharrell Williams, and then Destiny's Child. Yeah. Wait. Oh yeah, that's right. They played the. I was like. Destiny Child. Survivor. Oh yeah, I was like, they, oh yeah, they did play Survivor. I was like, Destiny Child didn't get back Orange. together. Yeah. Okay. I was about to do a spit but, take. I was like, wait, Destiny Child got back together for the, for this fucking duck movie. But uh, also, um, also, I will say that uh, it, it sounds weird to say, but uh, Aquafina is like perfect to voice a pigeon. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, uh, that fits. I already know what the joke of the movie is. They're asking to go to Jamaica. They land in New York. They're pro- they're going to Jamaica, Queens. And yeah. they're, they're going to think it's Jamaica because, you know, no one ever calls Jamaica Ave. Jamaica, you know, like, actually just Jamaica Ave. They just say Jamaica, like, if you're from the city. Yeah. So, you know, it, the, like, it's going to be one of those, like, you know, I guess duck out of water stories, and they're gonna misinterpret, and you know, lo- mm-hmm. the, you know the lovesick simp duck is gonna end up missing his girl, but finding love with some other random foul. Well, no, he's probably gonna find her by happen chance. May- probably, because mm-hmm. their whole thing is that the girl and her flock went off. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I I don't know. Personally, wasn't. I did it. like the uh, joke where it's like, "Just follow me, and everything will be." Okay, that was funny. That was. I funny. mean, I got a chuckle out of that. To have it be a triple tap, though. Uh. Yeah, like two times was enough to make it like chuckle. The third time was a bit much. Well, I did like but, her response, where it was just like, maybe not too close. I don't know, man. She's 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 an acquired taste in terms of uh, in terms of comedy, yeah. especially like, when especially I animated pigeon, comedy. I just like I despise this pigeon. I also just I also just hate pigeons in general. But there. to also to leave to leave on a positive the... to leave on a positive note, there was one trailer that you forgot to talk about. Okay. Okay. Outlaw Johnny Black. Oh shit! Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, so well, let's call it what it really is: Old West Black Dynamite. Uh, yeah. And it's just as awesome as that description sounds. Mm-hmm, Watching yeah. that ASAP looks and, fucking dope. Uh, and a yeah. fun fact. I mean, mm-hmm. Fun fact. Guess where I got that trailer from? Where? Yeah, Brian. Michael J. White's official YouTube page. Oh, cool! I didn't know he did YouTube. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, hell yeah. Well, uh, this is a project that he has been personally, uh, like, funded. I mean, and he's yeah, been a passion yeah. project of like, his for years now. Yeah, because, like, I mean, he he's the only person that, like, <laughs> je- nowadays genuinely loves black exploitation films and is willing to go full camp and not worry about people, like, whining about shit with black exploitation films. Mm-hmm. So... Respect. I mean, and I do got to give him cred. He was openly willing when uh, not only did he play a really good bronze tiger that was very underused, mm-hmm. he also wasn't afraid to get out the claws. Also, also, yeah. like, as much shit as I give that movie, he actually was spot on perfect casting for Al Simmons. He or, knows how to uh, play, he knows how to play a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. and Al Simmons I'm, is nothing if not a piece of shit. He he is another garbage person. Uh, and I'll give like uh, Tom McFarland this: he knew how to create a perfect, just utter dick bag of a character when he made I mean, Spawn. Takes one to know one, right? Well, um. From what I heard, they're what? actually trying trying to make a new one. Yeah, he yeah, Todd's behind it. 
Todd's the yeah, one. Todd's yeah, funding and, it. He's using all his and action I figure money last, to, to pull it off. And the last I heard, I think Jamie Foxx was in talks to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he, uh, you know, overcomes whatever his health scare is. Once again, prayers to Jamie. Um, I agree. Prayers. And, uh, it, yeah. I, no. one, I am perfectly content with a lot of people just trying things that they're passionate about, regardless of what it makes <laughs> some people feel, you know? Also, I mean... also, Todd, my boy, Todd, Rotacho, my man. Uh, show. Fellow legend. All right. Yeah. Listen listen to me, buddy. Look into the camera. Look me in the eyes. I want you to talk to Mr. Gaiman and get Angela in this movie. I've always wanted to see Angela in live action. Not just because I'm a horny ass motherfucker. Yes, that's part of it. But Angela's pretty fucking badass. Yeah. Who would you get the player though? I don't fucking know. Kieran Gillen? Get someone who is badass, but can compare, like, really pull off Angela's outfit. Jesus Christ. Kieran Gillen! That's what I'm saying. Mm. Ooh, true, true. Also, Todd, brother, one thing I need you to do, if you really want to adapt. Bond's origin story for Al. You gotta have Chapel in there. Yeah, talk, you got to, talk to life. Ooh. Talk to life out. Get you. You need to. You need to actually just patch things up with your friends and just make the cohesive universe that you had in the beginning. Suck it up, pay the rights, and just do it, Todd. This is what the fans want. Also, yes. um, I'm gonna have to close my eyes during certain parts because Malboja is yeah. terrifying. And John Leguizamo actually did a terrifyingly good job with that yes. for what he was given. Yes. Yes. But, uh, later, but uh, also, um, I do want to point out mm -hmm. that uh, from what I heard, I believe they're also trying to get off the ground a tie-in TV show about the two cops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Kevin Smith was talking about that because he because he, uh, he wanted to write it. Uh, fuck, I don't remember what it's called because like there is an act like they're like they're basically the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern of the Spawn universe. Uh, I think it's Sam and Twitch. Yeah, Sam and Twitch. There it is. And also, you gotta give this new Spawn actor the same gravitas voice. I know it's not possible, but. Keith David? Fuck. Yeah. Uh, dude, the HBO Spawn cartoon is the only good Spawn thing to ever come out outside of, like, the first ten issues of Spawn. Yeah. Yes, I said the first ten, because after the first ten, it just goes completely off the rails. Now, it's a fun off-the-rails ride, but I will not deny that it goes completely off the fucking rails. But, you know what goes off the fucking rails? And we really want to see it because it just wants to be just off the wall, fun, and insane. What is that, Tony? At law, Johnny Black. Yeah, man. It like the fucking the fucking action is like just top notch. It it goes full camp. Like I I just really it has the dumb one liners. Brian, you're not pushing your button. Um, uh, but yeah, it has the mm -hmm. dumb one liners. He's pretending to be a priest. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, hell yeah! Uh, it just again, it just looks, it just feels like a like a extended Black Dynamite episode, which is not a insult. I fucking love Black Dynamite, and the Adult Swim animated series was amazing. I wish they had more episodes of that. Gone too soon. But, mm -hmm. but you know, what's another thing that's really messy, that is far too connected to us. Yep, it's time. The of the show talking about yeah. how I miss your father. My God, how toxic are our fellow millennials in the show? Yep, it's time. Time to I... fucking leave. Let's get to right? the main topic. It's time in like <laughs> hour four. At this point, I'm not even looking at the time code because it's going to scare me. Uh, 
in like hour four, we're going to talk about the show that we actually titled this episode after. And our rants are actually going to be about this show and not other stuff. Uh, How I Met Your Father, starring Hilary Duff. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, we talked about it in the in the pre-stuff. Kim Cattrall does an amazing job as future Sophie. Yeah. I, lo- I love the yeah. gags and I love the chemistry between her and her uh, still yet to be seen future son. Yeah. Who has and, um... mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I also respect future son because future son is a theater kid. Mm, yeah. Art already earns cool points with me. Oh, yeah, Inky. Also, uh, like you were saying, the gags, like, talking about pizza, where it's like, dang it, now I want pizza, and she's just eating yeah, pizza. Oh, 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 yeah. Now I want a hot dog. Now I want another. Yeah. Uh, Mom, yeah. Can you, Mom, can you not graphically talk about your sex life, prude? I, I, literally, I was like, I want to know, Sophie. Tell me. Yeah. And also, and also, um, and... That's when, you know what? No, I need a snack. And the son's like, come on. Uh, and like, I love that he also complained about the cliffhangers. Uh, yeah. It was great. It was great. They're not doing this shit. Like, I thought I was tired of meta humor, and I kind of am, but like, they did it enough to where like, it was tolerable. Like, it was actually funny. Uh, so I really like the future gags and stuff. But now let's actually talk about the present day characters. Um, mm-hmm. So Sophie, my girl, my spirit yeah, animal. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Save Sophie for last. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Then we'll, we'll talk about my other spirit animal. Val. Valentina, uh, uh, Mar- uh, Valentina Morales. Oh my goodness. This, okay. this yeah. woman. To move something that is more up front, because uh-huh. two characters barely get enough screen time as it is. Okay, well, we got some, at least some, some recognition. All right, Sid and first. No, well, Sid, no, Sid plays a big part. Uh, we, 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 we could, we, uh, Sid actually has a pretty big section, and like the Hannah stuff is a part of it. Like that's why I was. Mm-hmm. Because the Sid and Hannah stuff is part of my rant, so I was saving that for towards the end. I just want to get that out of the way. I mean, cause... all right, go off. Which, uh, by the way, just fun fact: Sid's actor. Mm-hmm. Do not know if you recognize him. No, I, do. I mean I do, but I don't know who he is. That is the kid from Life of Pi. Oh shit! Not him, bro. Wow. Damn. Yep. Man, Richard Parker would be proud of you, my friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we just want to make clear. I knew. I, like, they really tried to, like, pull off this whole long-distance relationship thing throughout the entire show. And I was like, these crazy kids will make the distance. They're trying everything they can to get through things i see it also can i get an amazon link to uh what can i get the amazon link to what they were you know the 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 gift she sent over that looks like a lot of fun (laughs) i mean like you know not to get super graphic but like i i i tested out the 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 remote like the uh like app controlled stuff and that is a lot of fun on its own but like uh, that shit that looks like that looks like a party i and i want to be i want to be part of that party (laughs) but it's mostly something that i feel for sid Mm -hmm. like oh yeah yeah like but he put in all that effort only to find out that, like, at first I was like, oh, it's just a kiss. It's not that bad. Like, a kiss, it's cheating, it's bad. But, like, they never had sex, at least. And, but then and she, then. but then you find out that, like, she ran because she was afraid it was going to eventually, because she could feel that it was going to eventually turn into a sexual thing. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. never mind. No, no, fuck that. Yeah, because he was like... Wait a minute, if you ran... You forgot your packing cubes. 
What are you, you don't running never from? Forget those. Yeah. What are you running from? Like, yeah, and also, because you know, like, and they did uh, like kudos to the writers for that because, like, it it was a good bait and switch because, like, you know, uh, Sid from the jump, like, even even when we first meet him, like in the whole like Uber scene in the pilot, like he's all about these big love actually style like grand romantic gestures. So, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Y so like when Hannah shows up in the middle of the fucking hurricane, you're like, oh, now it's Hannah's turn to do a grand romantic gesture. And then it just but then you find out. <laughs> yeah. It's not a grand romantic gesture. It's Hannah it's being a, a coward. Out. Hannah being a coward. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah. He was a fucking coward. No, no, no. Yeah. I this might be me going crackpot theory here, right? Uh-huh. As soon as our boy Sid went down to Cali to be with her, mm -hmm. him seeing all the inside jokes that she's having with her coworkers, all this stuff, mm -hmm. where he basically ripped a, himself a new asshole by sliding in California rain. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah, which uh, I'm by the way, his jeans were still intact. To be honest, uh, bringing it bringing it back to uh, a reference to last episode, I know he's not, but the doctor friend looked a lot like sexy Merlin. He did. He did yeah. look a lot like sexy Merlin. I thought the same thing, Brian. Um, like, no lie, when I saw what Sid was going through, I'm not, uh, like, I actually had kind of flashbacks to Brian in a way, and I'll, uh, this will make sense when I explain it. Not the whole, like, cheating scumbag thing, but, like, from, uh, like, S Brian was Sid at a point, because, like, you know, when I first made friends with Brian, like, I brought Brian into my existing friend group, and, you know, we were already, uh, like, super established, so there were, like, a fuck ton of inside jokes and all these stories mm -hmm. and whatnot, and Brian just had to be like, ha yeah, mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But then, you know, eventually, Brian ingratiated himself with the group, and now he has his own stories and, you know, inside jokes and, you know, shit yeah. like that. So, like, you know, at first, I thought it was, just, you know, that kind of just, oh, you know, that that's that's cute, that's relatable. And then it turned out, like, it was actually the seeds of something very sinister. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It, it, makes me, it, it makes me so angry, because... Not to get too entirely into it, but I had a moment where I was cheated on. And mm -hmm. same. I cannot tolerate people being fucking cowards. Yep. I've I've been I've been cheated on yeah. twice in uh in my life and one of them was in a long distance uh was during a long distance relationship ironically with a girl who went to school in California. Well, oh damn. Ended up going to co uh getting into a college at California. We'll not name names. Uh th that woman shall remain anonymous. Uh we are uh. we are cool now, but that really fucking hurt. Which, uh, twist it's the knife, but if I'm not mistaken, didn't she say that the doctor that she kissed was not sexy Merlin? Yeah! No, 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 she did. She did. No, she said it was him. She said it was Eli, but she said it was like a, just a drunken mistake. You know, the usual bullshit that cheaters give to, to write off their bullshit fuck-ass lies. I mean, lies. he could sense it from the minute. Sid was right uh, about let me, it. Let like, me just let me let me not let me not keep talking about this because otherwise I'm gonna get fucking triggered and fly off yeah, the handle. Cause, cause I imagine I imagine cause uh Sid even knew it and he knew that there was something between them. But she tried to make him feel like he was crazy. Like, dude, and like the, the, the thing that makes it the thing that makes it worse. The thing that makes it worse 
is that like Sid had like a, a genuine connection with Taylor and like it never turned into a relationship but it was a really good friendship and you no. know what during that time he needed a fucking friend but you know what because he felt like it could possibly turn into something romantic he did the good guy he did the good and like correct move and was like oh, and, and polite and no. politely told Taylor uh, I'm sorry Taylor but I don't think we should talk anymore and Taylor understood they ended they, they ended their friendship amicably and Sid and think... moved on and, I, and like this was one Sid like really raised up on my like character tier list and I was like good for you man <laughs> like you yeah. unlike other characters I could name and critique later on. Oh, I got oh, 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 that's where most of the rant is coming. That, that's why I'm saving Jesse for close to last as well. Because, who oh boy. Oh, yeah. Oh boy. Which, which is it's ironic so because bad. that was like the first story of the season. But I, but that's the one where most of the words are coming from. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, but, but yeah, I even like the fact where, um, where Jesse was involved in that story, mm -hmm. and Jesse was like super <laughs> jealous because he thought it was another guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, then he, when he uh, realized it was another girl, he was like, "Dude, he's like, uh, bro, uh, I, I don't think that's a good idea." And like, look, I I'm glad. I'm glad, like, again, this shows, like, the positive side of friendship we were talking about in the free stuff. This is why I'm not editing it out, because everything we talked about does come full circle here. Uh, like, you know, calling your friends out on their bullshit, being, being the first to be like, I don't think you should do that, buddy. I don't think you're thinking straight. I don't think you realize what's happening right now. And he realizes it and says, oh, shit. Yes. Yeah, okay. And you yeah, know, that, that, that again, kudos to Sid for that. Uh, also, just kind of yeah. since we're still since we're talking about Sid, I love the Turk and J uh, like Turk and JD friendship they have. Like that's yeah. immediately what I thought of. They are just they're Turk and JD, yeah. but like millennials, and it's fucking great. I love that. Also, yes. also that episode where uh, him and Ellen tried to make. Jesse and Charlie. Yep. Friends. Yeah. Uh, and then they just ended up getting jealous. That's where the, uh, uh, that's why I made the brochacho joke with the Todd McFarlane thing earlier. If you, yeah, you know, if you, if you got, if you caught, if you, uh, keen eyed yeah. listeners or heard that one. Mm -hmm. But one thing, I just have to say this. It's just, it could be just me. Okay. But there is just a lot. <laughs> of just mo toxic millennial behavior in this show. <laughs> Look, as toxic millennials, you know, yes, I, like, you know, we all yeah. agree. Oh, like, yeah. Everyone on the panel agrees. It hits a little too close yeah, to home sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I had to, I had to stop it. I had to stop at points because I was like, all right, this is getting too real. Mm -hmm. Getting too real. And not so, just so with the shit stuff. Yep. No, oh my god, don't. We'll save that for later. Oh, uh, yeah. But I, yeah. I do want to point out that uh, that uh, with the creators, with the, with the whole thing with Sid, is they worked on the whole thing about getting uh, Jesse to move out and everything. Well, now puzzle pieces have uh, fallen to where the best friends can move in again. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And, and with... Okay, so here's something that's really hilarious to me, right? Mm -hmm. Ellen and Sid go have this big grand plan of like, hey, Ellen wants to live by herself because she wants to be a girl boss. That's great. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then Sid mm -hmm. is under the impression he wanted to be, he wanted to live with his wife. That's cool too. And he's on his wife being a fucking cheater, but. Ugh. Mm hmm. Ideas there, but the both of them fuck up so hard when you get to be heard on the nanny cam of all um, things. That's you know you know what's funny. I instantly thought of you when that shit happened. Uh, hey, why is the light for next to this pic uh, this uh, the picture of the microphone on? What do you think that means? Yeah. There have been several times we were like, "Hey, Tony, your mic's hot." 
Your mic's out. Uh, uh, you might not want to say that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Although I hate to, I hate to admit it. I hate to admit it. But I do feel like something like that would be hijinks that would happen if Tony and I tried to work together, just the two of us. Oh yeah, that that, that, that that's why I can't. That's why I can't leave you two idiots alone. So oh, okay, okay. Pause for like a quick second. All right. Well, this is the dead air you're gonna have to chop out. So okay. Are, are, you, are you insinuating, Brian, that we would just get into nothing but shenanigans? I, I believe I was the one who insinuated that, but yes. He insinuated it. I confirmed it. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Makes me wonder what kind of shenanigans you're gonna put me through there, uh, buckaroo. I mean, hey, look... I, look, that's why that's why I that's why I'm the te designated Tony Wrangler. I don't think Brian's g got what it takes to wrangle properly. He, exactly. He's that's... too he's too much of a enabler and madness embracer to actually you yes. know do the job. Yep, it's like afraid to say something. You it's give the, me it's, it's the Ellen problem. Uh, like you give that she me has. exactly. You, you give me the things and material to play with. I I really go out and play. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And and Brian, yes. Brian's too nice to say, uh, Tony, no, don't do that. Like, cause, exactly. Cause just like Ellen, t uh, Brian is a fucking people pleaser. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Sure, I'm yeah. going to work, work, I, work. I was singing that. <laughs> I, don't, I like, know. Audio, uh, uh, like audio only people, you can't, you can't see it because you know obviously you're listening. But like, my mic was on, but I was, ma I was mouthing the song. I was, I was mouthing the oh, song. Oh no, I heard it. Uh, you know, I was, I was trying to forget that, Brian. Fuck you. Now it's back in my head again. <laughs> you evil bastard. <laughs> But yeah, now, 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 uh, speaking of Ellen, let's talk about Ellen. All right, so. We need to protect her. She does. She needs to be protected at all costs. Uh, mm -hmm. All costs. Ellen must be protected. Yeah. Like, also I also have I, a girlfriend I, that is not uh, to her level. Yeah, like, so that pissed me off personally because, mm -hmm. like, Again, I'm just going to keep connecting it to these guys and, like, just my, my, my friends in general. Because that's just how relatable this show is. When, yeah. when like, that shit happened to Ellen with Rachel, that pissed me off because, like, that is, you know, again, I'm not going into details. We're not just spilling all our, like, our entire, the entirety of our memoirs on this episode of the podcast. Although this episode is long enough to be a fucking memoir. Um... <laughs> um you know, that type of shit happened to Tony, like, where, like, you know, Tony, mm. we've mentioned several times, is, is an acquired taste of a person. And yes. he can be a lot. Yeah, I I, I acknowledge that. But, I, like, dude, if you are going to initiate a relationship with a person like that, you know what you're signing up for. Don't just... Don't just give up because you're like, you're a lot. Her being a lot is what makes her her. You're asking her to change herself? Yes. Like, that's Which bullshit. I, Fuck you, Rachel. And, yes, fun, indeed. Like... Indeed, and I will say that... Mm -hmm. That that is a big ups for Ellen, though. Also, that she recognized it. Also, audience, just just a heads up: we are not just gonna fuck you to all the women. There are some fuck yous targeted at some of the male characters as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, uh, oh no! And like we said, one of the like best cinnamon roll characters is a woman. Ellen. Yep. Yep. Ellen must be protected yeah. at all costs. Like I'm. Yeah. Like we mentioned before. But yeah. yeah. All right. So and I. I like that twist also with her, mm -hmm. that both her and Charlie can uh, kind of uh, afford their own places. Yeah, but but they're but they're best friends. They don't want to they don't want to be separated from each other. Although I will say, uh, maybe the two of you 
Get a we nicer do a apartment. Place where yeah. you can get your own beds. Yeah, get a nicer apartment. You don't yeah. need the unicorn sheets anymore. Exactly. And get also a... because you went to work for work. God damn it! You <laughs> bastard! <laughs> I'm trying to get it to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if we're gonna have an episode this long, I'm gonna have as much fun with it as possible. You are evil, but I love you all the same, homie. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I would do, I would do what Ellen did for Charlie and save one of you motherfuckers if you were in trouble. And I love that they played like that scene from The Bodyguard. <laughs> Oh, this is fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. I, I, dude, I, like, legit, like, had, like, a fucking belly laugh with that shit. Uh, I was like... I was like... Oh, I laughed so yeah. fucking hard. And, and Red, also, bro. the look on just Charlie's face when all that was going on. He was <laughs> like, um, okay, I guess this is going on. <laughs> this is happening now. All right. I didn't know Ellen was this strong, but, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> And speaking of, from one cinnamon roll to another, let's talk about our boy Charlie. Yeah, so I actually want to, like, lump Val and Charlie together because their story and themselves are uh, often intertwined. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So let's talk about Val and Charlie. So once again, gonna going to relate a story to my own life. Uh, and uh, names will not be mentioned. Uh, to, for to keep to keep the uh, you know to keep the uh, the woman's name uh, private because we are still friends. Uh, but in my most recent relationship, the fight we got into that really pushed it over the edge was about having kids. And uh, so, Val, I really I really felt it. I really felt it, and I really felt that struggle of like. Do I wait for them? Like, I I know what we have here is special. I know that, like, this is something that you don't just come across every day. But I, but it's a deal breaker. I want a family. I was raised around a family. Family is really important to me. I need that. So, like, I, I don't know, I, I really vibed with the struggle. Like, I know, like, it happened in How I Met Your Mother. It was that whole thing. But, like, I wasn't old enough to have experienced that before. I yeah. have now. And, damn, I, this, this, one, this was one of the plot lines that really cut close to home, especially because this happened, like, a year ago. So, it's still pretty fresh. Also, let's be honest, this show did it a lot more, like, realistic and grounded than, um, How I Met Your Mother. Mm -hmm. I agree. This yeah. happened in a, in a later season of How I Met Your Mother where they weren't always on their A-game. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so... I really, I really vibe with Val, but I also understand Charlie's perspective, um, because you know, uh, like I can't relate to Charlie like fully, obviously, because I'm not a rich white aristocrat, uh, but you know, as someone who you know has suffered from emotional abuse and generational trauma, you know, not to the direct fault of my parents, because, you know, that was just how they were raised. It was a cycle. And the point is, right, like, that cycle is hard, but you have to be the one. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I like, I've been talking about this in therapy a lot recently. Uh, you have to be the one to step up and break that cycle. You can't just wallow in the fact that you know this cycle did this to you and yeah that's what charlie is trapped in right now and i like i felt it because you know i've been there i was in there up until very recently honestly um so like i couldn't be mad at charlie for his reaction and response to you know uh, his uh to val's wanting kids because honestly, 
I'll be real with y'all. That's one of my greatest fears is like, you know, I'm a I'm a really fucked up person. If I bring a person into this world and I fuck up even a little bit in the same way my parents did, my kid could end up like me or worse. I've thought about that so much that it's fucking kept me up at night. Like, yeah. But the thing is, is you never know. With what, raising kids, it's no, always no, a and guessing I, no, game. And I mean, like, you know, again, that's what I that's what I had to, like, you know, teach myself to get out of that, like, anxiety loop. But, like, you know, I so I totally feel Charlie on that point. So it was a very balanced dynamic in terms of that argument. It didn't feel like a cliche. Like, I'll give you an example besides How I Met Your Mother of a, a show that handled it very badly. I feel, uh, and it's, uh, you know, surprise, surprise, an Arrowverse show. Supergirl handled this very poorly. They did, they needed an excuse to write off Maggie. Oh, yeah. And so they, they were like, oh, um, uh, 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 how do we do this? Uh, Maggie doesn't want kids. Okay. Bye, Maggie. Yeah. Hello, Jimmy's sister that nobody, uh, that, you know, barely anybody knew about. And he's now the new guardian. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that, that's filling uh, that's... the role of two separate characters. So that's, a, <laughs> but that's another rant for another time. But yeah, like, point is this this type of plot yeah. line has been done before. It's very tricky to handle, and I feel like this show did a very good job, um, especially as someone who has gone through this situation and this fight. Uh, does anybody have I, any words about uh, about this plot line and well, about Charlie and Val? Well, Val, I like that uh, she never really changed who she was, though. Mm -hmm. Even with her like whole playgirl status, like uh, one of the one of the little gags that I like that they did, which was uh, the dude so and so. Oh yeah, Rando. What's his face? Rando. Rando. Rando, which they just had emojis for his different oh, that was, expressions. That was fucking hilarious. And like when, and he, when he was end. naked, <laughs> just fucking eggplant emoji. Uh, and the peach emoji. Don't forget the yeah, peach emoji. Yeah, the peach emoji. emoji too. That was that was great. <laughs> that was great. As well. it, yeah, it, yeah, that was a definitely it, a good uh, gag uh, from uh, that was also kind of like a modern day version of like what they did in how I met your mother and also where it's one, like also one thing that I really like, appreciate uh, they're telling bad. the sorry I was just going to finish my thing no you're okay like where they're they're telling the story so they're not going to remember everything yeah yeah no that that's realistic for like actual recollections i mean there're plenty of times where i've done that with uh with stories uh, but like, uh, uh, one thing that I really like with Val, and again, maybe this is just because like, she is like half of what makes up me out of these characters. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Like, you know, she was like sexually positive the entire time, like Brian said, but like mm -hmm. nobody w went out and called her a hoe or like, you know, any of that shit. They didn't do a plot line where people were like shaming her. Her parents didn't say, like, you know, they don't like her promiscuous actions, any of that normal stereotypical bullshit. Really appreciate it. No. Um, I, I think that's great. And, uh, like, right. it was fantastic. Like, Val, oh, yeah. Val is and an I, amazing character, and her parents and are sexy like, as fuck. Yes. And I do also like that with Val, they actually kind of flipped the script a little bit. Mm -hmm. And at one point when, uh, when Sophie was down, she brought her up and talked about, like, the whole true love thing. And, like, they reversed that on us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I because I, I I like that like Val learned that from Sophie and was there for Sophie uh when when she was in that like you know depression hole um mm -hmm. and it, uh, it was it was just really nice and like just kudo I I love the actress who plays Val and not just because of her fantastic silhouette although mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that's a fact. Yeah, but 
like, you know, before I get shocked by my Barney device, I'm going to continue. Uh, 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 yeah. Was Val's fantastic. Was mm -hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, earlier that mm -hmm. you had a similar to Charlie. Mm -hmm. And, well, I'm at a point in my life where I'm planning a lot of stuff like Val is. And uh, it's looking more and more like a real possibility. Part of me is terrified of the kind of dad I would be. Good for you, you know, dude. It, it's a... Uh, yeah. It's utterly terrifying. I mean, that's because... a, I mean, like, you know, I, I talked about how terrifying that is, but honestly, that's a good fear to have. It, it just means you care. Mm -hmm. I, part of me just keeps planning various things throughout my life, and I'm really wanting to make the sick. I've done everything I could, because uh, <laughs> this current relationship of mine is uh, something that I'm sticking with, and the inherent fear of the way my parents raised me and thinking, am I mm -hmm. good enough to be a parent like i've always asked myself i would be oh and... yeah yeah no no again yeah i thought yeah. that was the, that's the exact same shit that you know crossed my mind and went through my head when mm -hmm. uh you know and like at the time in my relationship uh you know with this unnamed person uh you know i like i thought because of like how well we understood each other and just got each other like we always brought out the best in each other so i thought hey you know even if i fuck up she'll be there to catch me because she's always there to catch me but just like i mentioned before how like you know i'm the th i'm the therapist friend and i never but nobody ever checked to see if i was okay you know i made that mistake and you know luckily for val like val is checking up on charlie and actively helping him through this so but you know future sophie mm -hmm. future sophie spoiled it fuck you future sophie but like we know that they're gonna work through it and you know it, it has a happy ending and i'm really happy for them yeah uh the I, uh their whole little uh lightning thing was actually very cute Mm -hmm. Also, as a, as as a corgi owner, all of those corgis yeah. fucking adorable. They're truly the yeah. heroes that currently needed at that time in his formative years. Yep. Yep. Look, look. Uh, you know, again, as a corgi owner, you will never find a better best friend than your corgi buddy. They will always love you, no matter how many mm -hmm. times you fuck up. Yep, exactly. And I will no say fucking... that... mm -hmm. Sorry about that, Brian. I had a great segue, but you can go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say that one possible negative for this is the fact that Charlie didn't get that much until like the very end of the season. Yeah, but I hope that that means that there's going to be more for yeah, him in because the future, I, I, and that they actually address it. Yeah, I think I think it was more of a like they they wanted to. I think uh, you know I can't speak for the writers because I wasn't in the writers' room, but it felt like the writers were really trying to find Charlie's voice and like make him evolve past his you know one note, ha ha, pretty himbo, like the kind of shadow thing. water. Yeah, and they did. And, you know, it took a while, but it was worth the wait. And mm -hmm. like like you said, I, I think they're definitely, you know, they set themselves up to really have a lot of room for Charlie to grow. And we are, and since we already know his end point, like, honestly, mm -hmm. it's just some, uh, you know, even though I joked and said, fuck you, future selfie for spoiling it, it actually gives us something to look forward to. Uh, like, I know a lot of people would be like, well, it ruins the tension. We don't, you know, now that we know it's going to work out, we don't have to worry. 
yeah, but now the joy is going to be like, oh, so this is the, this is the next step he takes. Okay, cool. Good for you, yeah, Charlie. Especially, especially with the fact that uh, where we ended with Val. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, don't blame her. Don't blame her. You know, uh, her heart, her heart was still, her heart was very broken. She was in a very emotionally vulnerable state. And Drew was also in a very emotionally vulnerable state. And to be fair, life has beat, been beaten the fuck out of Drew. So, yeah. like, that, uh, also, that that poor boy needed a dub. Mm-hmm. Also, and also, if you're trapped, if you're trapped in a bar during a hurricane. Listen, what else are you going to do? If I wasn't, if I was in a tight space with, if I was in a tight space with Val, I know exactly what I'd be doing. All right. I, I mean, can't say them on YouTube, but I know exactly what I'd be doing. I mean, also, gentlemen, it's the suspension bridge effect. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's it's why, it's, why, it's why, like, you know, um, uh, people, in order to get through natural disasters a lot of the time, have sex during said natural disasters. So... Like, yeah. yeah, you know, makes sense. Um, like, and one thing that I will definitely give credit for this show is they don't dwell on the stupid mistakes that much. Like, I don't no. think there are going to be multiple episodes where Charlie and Va- like Charlie is like is jealous of Drew. I honestly think Val's going to drop Drew probably like two episodes tops. Like, I, yeah. I don't see that being a thing. They're just way too incompatible. He's too much of a good uh, good boy. And I know what some of you might be thinking, but like opposite the track, Jay, I think it's going to work. Nah, look, I, 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 no. I, I look no. as, as someone who very much vibes with Val, I tried the whole, you know, find a good girl to balance you out. It don't work. It don't work. So no, what a good really. girl. Bad guy. Uh, man. Yeah. yeah. You're not going into our our screamo emo fucking face, Brian. We ain't doing that shit but, no more. Uh, but that yeah, was that um, was quite the face. Like I'm actually uh, surprised you about, they like, didn't touch on that. On stuff. Mm-hmm. The whole Charlie with the, the Derek Jeter thing. Oh, that was hilarious. Look, I that was, great. That was hilarious. Funny. I'm a so I'm a fucking I'm a Yankees fan. I know, big shocker. Uh uh my Yankee my Yankees hat is in my closet. I'd pull it out right now, but I promised I would go hatless. Um I I am very tempted to get the hat, but I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm staying strong, committing to my promise. Uh Except for strong, except, except for one special episode, but uh, you know, stay tuned for that. But yeah, uh, that joke is hilarious because as a Yankee fan, I had heard the rumors, all that shit. Uh, Derek Jeter is a god, a legend. I, I fucking I fucking love that man. Not just because he took my team to this, uh, you know, World Series, but like he's just he's just a legend, and like. Charlie is the perfect person to pull off the Derek Jeter. Like he may not have the money anymore, but he has the class and sophistication to really put together a good basket. Um, and it it was just really fun. Uh, I I loved Courtney's uh reaction. She was like, "Wait a minute, this was a one night stand basket. I slept with Jeter. At least his had a Birkin bag in it." A basket, a bargain in a basket. That man truly is a god. Yeah, which he is. Love you, Derek Jeter. That's why it takes someone special like that in order for that to pull off, and for the ladies to know that that's what you're doing. I'm really sad that you and J Lo didn't work out. But I hope, I, but Same. I hope you're, uh, but I hope, you know, I hope your kids, I hope you and your, I hope you still get to see your kids. Uh, but uh, anyways, enough about Derek Jeter. Uh, 
Uh, well, let's talk about someone who uh, isn't Derek Jeter. Oh, who fuck. Is, is it time? Is it time? It, it, it's time to talk about these two dingleberries. All right. Okay. Can I, can, can I, can I start, please? Can I start? You have the floor. Okay. Good. Good. All right. So the whole reason the free show took so long is because I wanted to establish a firm preamble of the fact that we all love these kinds of sitcoms. And I wanted to just talk deeply about like how deep that connection runs in order to set up for this rent. Okay. Let me, let me fucking, let me prepare adequately for this. And for audio people, I'll even put it right next to the mic so you can hear it. All right, so let's do this. So, the will they, won't they trope. Okay. Okay, so, all right. I'm going to start with positivity before I get on my negative rant. Mm -hmm. I will give How I Met Your Father this credit. It did not drag on as long as I thought. But I swear to the TV gods, if you do the bullshit where you've spent all this time to get them together only to have another dumb fucking circumstance break them apart, I am going to throttle my computer screen. Oh, no, no, no. If I have to go through the same bullshit a third time, a third time, a third time, I'm going to yeet something from my fridge into the parking lot of my apartment complex. Like, dude, it was so fucking frustrating because these two are so smart, but they're such fucking idiots. Oh no, 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 no. Both may be intelligent in the like book smarty sense. And the artistic but, um, sense, yeah. They're stupid. They're yeah, they're fucking idiots. And it was it was the most frustrating thing to watch. Like I know the will they won't they trope is has been done to death, and I've hated it every single time. But this one was the straw that broke the camel's back because usually, right? I <laughs> never like both sides of the will they won't they. I I'm usually that guy. I'm usually that fan who's like, you shouldn't get with this jackass. Like this. This person is clearly better for you. But in this exactly. case, I was fully invested in both of these fucking goobers. And like, I was like, I was basically like that, like that little kid with the, with the two dolls, mashed them together. Now kiss! Kill stab you! But, okay, Jay. I respect that sentiment. I respect that. But let me do you one better. This is mostly directed at Jesse. Uh-huh. So you're telling me, brother, that you started a thing with a girl you're really into that matches you intellectually in the same profession. And you went out there in a fucking hurricane to make sure she was safe? Only the, to turn back around to a girl that not only disrespected your girlfriend to her face, to her face, but did shady shit to see if she can find shit on her? No, you don't go back to that. No, you stay away from it like it's a the fucking plague until she corrects her behavior, because that's not okay. Right. Only to uh, okay, oh, yeah. oh, okay. I so I I I I was agreeing with that up to a point, and uh, you know, let me let me play Sophie's lawyer real quick as, as the resident Sophie here, because I look, I'm not saying this is right. I'm not saying this is right at all. I, in fact, I know it is horrible behavior and it is not okay. However, 
However, to play Sophie's advocate, because I have been I've been here before. I've done fucked up shit because I was scared of letting somebody in and I did horrible, horrible things that made me look like the absolute worst dirt bag on the face of the earth. And like it, it th that regret eats away at me every single fucking day. So I know how Sophie feels, but also, yeah. also, we can't yeah. be full anger force at Sophie. You know who we need to be angry at? That motherfucking <laughs> bitch, Meredith. Cause, well, I'm mad at Meredith too. But, because but, it, but, because but, if it wasn't oh. for because if it wasn't for fucking Meredith and her manipulative gaslighting, fucking just I toxic agree. ass behavior, mm -hmm. I selfish agree toxic behavior, this Sophie and Jesse would not have been put in that situation in the fucking first place. We wouldn't exactly. have had that problem with Parker. And Sophie did have that growth where she was going to come back, apologize. She realized what she did was wrong. But then, Je but then, thanks to Meredith, she saw Jesse do that thing, like, like make out with her and shit. And then, mm -hmm. you know, like any normal person who is damaged and fucked up, she backslid. We all backslide. Cause, cause uh, two things. Let's be honest. Sophie is hella damaged. Oh yes, I agree. and and also um, I'm like, not Brian. saying. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make the reason why I'm mad at Sophie is because I see myself in her. Oh yeah, no, I see, I, I see I, the stupid shit I've done in my twenties, and I'm uh, like, girl, really? <laughs> we want to play victim. Right now, when you're causing a bunch of nonsense, yes, Meredith is a toxic bitch, and we cannot stand her. She is awful. But there are things in our own behavior that we need to correct. No, I no, I not, I, I entirely, yeah. I, I entirely agree with that, and I, I, I get your perspective of the uh, Sophie should not be rewarded with this relationship with Jesse yet because she needs to correct that behavior, but I don't think the Jesse relationship will just be the cure all solution. But I think okay. now that Jesse is more actively in her life and she doesn't have to worry about, like, the like the pressure and the fear and anxiety that comes from fuck i blew it again with you know the person mm -hmm. that i knew i like i could really see myself with because again i've been there and you know still regret it still regret it we i, I just talked about this unnamed woman still regret it uh, yeah and so like I I think, you know, even though this is too early for speculation, I think now that Jesse is more in her life, Jesse can be one of the people that really helps to correct Sophie's behavior. A good relationship oh, is about yeah. being able to call your partner out on their bullshit. And we see that Jesse is really good at that. So I think yes. Jesse will hold her accountable and vice versa yes. for Sophie to Jesse and two yeah. things yeah. two things I want to add to that mm -hmm. one I was going to mention this earlier but uh, I'm not saying that, that uh, them getting together then was good or bad but I will say that I'm glad they went ahead and did it and got them together and didn't do something like friends with where the new love partner for half of the will they won't they is with someone for like half a season when you know that it's doomed yeah i i'm i'm glad like as fucked That's up cool. as fucked up as it sounds because like they were cute but i honestly didn't see much coming out of the whole parker relationship it felt like they were just treading old ground and i was like again no disrespect to parker or any parker friends out there but like i'm glad that they just ripped that band-aid off 
quickly instead of dragging their fucking feet and making me have to sit through and deal with this bullshit. Yep, like so, friends. So with Ross and Rachel. Yeah, so but also the other thing is uh if you notice specifically, Tony, mm-hmm. when they finally did have the epic kiss, she didn't say that's how I met your father. Yep. And he didn't say that that was your father. Yep. Oh yeah. So, I'm aware of that, Brian, but So I'm I'm with Jay. I think they're going to work to better each other while being together, but then go their separate ways and still be friends. Yep. Yep. I mean, I agree with that perspective, but honestly, I just don't see anything healthy coming out of a relationship between those two that's just me and i i can i can agree with that but like the point me and brian are trying to make is because like brian is right on the same page with me i think you know just because they're not going to work out doesn't mean that jesse like a more long-term relationship with Jesse isn't going to be a good stepping stone to prepare both Sophie and Jesse for who they really should be with. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I because I mean, because because that because that's one of the things that I hate about teen romances. Teen romances, uh, like especially on TV and in and in books and shit they always focus on the first person that they meet or have feelings for and then they go through all the bullshit and then they still and they they meet all these you know great possible partners and then they just still end up with just that first fucking person i think how i met your uh, father is doing a really smart subversion in the fact that Je- like they're really really telegraphing the Jesse Sophie thing but Jesse and Sophie are just going to be like a necessary step in order for them to get to their true finish line yeah yeah and i did notice that there was going to be another valentine's day that pops up with Ian so mm. Yep. I, I can agree with your guys' sentiment. I do. I do agree with it. But for me, I just don't... I just see it from a perspective of just someone doing terrible behavior and getting rewarded for it. That's just a me thing. I mean... I'm I'm going to I'm going to be honest with you Tony as someone who has been the person to like execute the terrible behavior and then get rewarded for it but then eventually it blows up in my face uh that was a fucking wake up call I needed to actually get my shit together and I think that's important that's why I think this needs to happen like all- I, Sophie can't become a better person until she really learns how to fall because well, and- the problem with Sophie and honestly this is a problem with me too is that there are too many people that are just ready to catch Sophie when she falls Sophie needs to figure this shit out on her own and the only way she's going to be forced to is if she fucking gets knocked on her ass. And this and you know will knock her on her ass. And you know what? That's fair. I can concede the, to the point that your guys are making. I concede to that. And I agree with you. It's just, it didn't, it irked me. No, I, can, they I, had... I, no, I totally get oh, that. Yeah. I totally get that, which is why I wanted to like oh, go yeah. into detail about like, you know, because. Go ahead, bro. Mm-hmm. You're good. I needed to drink anyway. I was just, I was just gonna say, uh, yeah, because that's one thing about this show, is that not always the good people are gonna get what they des- the bad people are gonna get what they deserve. This is a whole thing of, uh... and even like even if it's annoying, like. To, to, to like, you know, 
piggyback off of what Brian's saying, even if that's annoying and that's irksome, it's also just fucking true. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, yes. Yeah. And it's real. And one that's kind of maybe a little bit too real, but also is played for laughs, and so we won't touch on it too long, mm-hmm. is uh, the dramatic return on TV of Sandy Rivers. Oh yeah, shit. I completely I completely forgot about that. Even though he's a new even though he's been in the news business for decades. Yep. He's currently a weatherman due to what did they say 43 allegations? allegations? Yeah, I think yeah. that I think that was a I think that was a play on the whole Matt Lauer thing. Mm-hmm. Uh mm-hmm. which, you know, because uh, uh, that was actually pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. And if you remember, that dude was actually co-hosting with Robin at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Robin was very much a Katie Couric stand-in. Mm-hmm. So what makes freak. sense. Like, look, guys. I uh, yeah, I may have been just outwardly annoyed with. Stuffy's behavior, like I said, I see a yeah, lot yeah, of no, mine. No, like, making, yeah, like, too, it, was, it was too close to the vest. I get it. The only reason I was able to see this, Tony, to be honest with you, I'd probably be in the exact same boat if I had not had a therapy session literally the, the day I watched the episode. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because, also, I because admit, funny enough, that's ex- like this type of shit is exactly what I talked about in my therapy session. So, mm. yeah, and for me, uh, I will admit that I was uh, close to that opinion, but just hearing Jay talk through it and walk through it that like put the final puzzle piece in play for me, yeah, yeah. And with that, like I mentioned, look, I'm mad at both of them for just pulling off the same sort of behavior in their own way, 100%. Yeah, no, and but, uh... it's like, look. Jesse, he deserves. Both of them deserve the best for themselves, you know. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And I think when you have somebody that, I mean, Jesse actually did honest to God try, and both he and Sophie did. They yeah. both honest to God try, mm-hmm. but it's things that throughout the second season that, again, thanks to Val finding that something. That stirred up the, those old feelings, and that led to you know jealous petty bullshit, and that happens, and it's so stupid, but it's real. And uh, yeah, it, exactly. It, that I mean, that's well, about, yeah. that's how people are, and like you know, uh, like again, I had like I'm not gonna obviously just fucking divulge my therapy records on this fucking podcast, but like. <laughs> It was the the conversation I had with my therapist was basically like a, well, you know, if you if you don't get that, those feelings out of your system, all it's going to do is fester and then turn into bitterness and hatred. And if you really care about this person, you don't want to end up hating them. Right. So, you know. Just give it time, and eventually, like, you can try again, maybe, and then if it doesn't work, you won't be upset about it because you actually, you know, got it out of your system. And if it does work, that's fantastic. You were right, and, you know, you can, you can be happy. But, like, so I, I think that's the situation that's going on with Sophie. Mm-hmm. Like, like... Along with the vowel thing, this this plot, this hit real close to home. Mhm. Mhm. All right. So God. now here's my rant. All right. Okay. First, we're gonna start with a fuck that bitch. Fuck yep. that bitch with a 32 yep. inch spiked dildo. Okay. Yeah. Stupid bitch. I fucking hate Meredith. This is no disrespect to the actress. You did a fantastic job. You 
fucking <laughs> killed it oh, yeah. in playing like the most despicable, dislikable fucking mm, character I have seen oh, in a just, long time. Just as a side note, just as a side note before mm. we get into this, we forgot to mention it though. Uh huh. Uh, Sid, like how he reacted and how he knew that this was happening, but. She manipulated him into, uh... Yup. Uh-huh. Yeah, yep. he knew. that would be best. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. So, let, let's fucking talk about her. Let's fucking talk about her. I, I can finally just get this off my chest. Okay. Meredith is the absolute fucking worst. And you want to know why? Because Meredith is the type of girl that, you know, when you first meet them, they seem like the one. They understand your every feeling, your every thought. They know exactly how to help you, what you need, what you're lacking in your life. They know what buttons to push and they make you feel like a person. They make you feel seen. They make you feel whole. Only for them to really just be out for themselves and to just use you because they see not just your value as a person, but your worth and what you can do for them. And mm -hmm. once that worth is spent, you're just thrown to the side like a piece of fucking garbage. <sighs> and then they use you again to get sympathy for themselves. Because they play the fucking no. victim because, yeah, they're the one who are hurt because you called them out on their bullshit because you were tired sure. of being used, abused, and manipulated like you were uh -huh. some fucking child. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is getting, this is getting too real. Getting too real. <sighs> Let me tell Go you, King. I have seen such utter bullshit in my time. Never. Never. Sure. I have felt a similar situation. Well, it was a similar feeling, but let me tell you, when I had <laughs> most of my dating life before my lovely girlfriend, that is, has been nothing but gaslighting, abuse, you name it. To the point where I suffered public embarrassment. Oh. The night. Just like the viral video. You. I don't fully believe I've told you gentlemen that story. And you don't no. have, and you don't have to. Honestly, you don't have Especially to. Especially not on camera, dude. I know, but the point being. I never, never gone through something like that. That left a scar on me till the day I die. I don't want to go through an embarrassing thing like that in fucking public. And that's what happened to Jesse. Mm -hmm. yep. That gang bitch who decided that Oh, that was a bit too much. No, 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 my career. Shut the fuck up, you stupid bitch. Oh, that ru that ruined my image. And, you know, Jesse was a better songwriter. And I need Jesse for me. Fuck you. Fuck your music. I don't give a fuck what kind of inspiration I am or how I'm your muse. And I, you need me to complete you. <laughs> cry, cry, cry. Shut the fuck up, you dumbass bitch. Don't get me started on, oh, we have to get things real just right. Girl, there's nothing real about you. You're a okay? fake, plastic, Barbie doll-ass, karaoke singing, <laughs> fucking That's a two dollars. Dude. I'm sorry. That's a disgrace on Barbie. That's a disgrace on Barbie. She is a brat. Uh, that burrito scene alone. Yeah, fuck. Uh -huh. Her, dude, that heartless fucking harpy. All right, soulless, vacuous, like a black hole. They just suck in. 
Ugh. No. Yep. She doesn't. Ugh. She doesn't deserve any light. Honestly, all the spotlight we we've been giving her for this fucking rant, as cathartic as it's been, she doesn't deserve the time we spent. But, no, yeah. but I will say, I will say that the whole point of her story and the whole thing helps to prove our story that sometimes the villains don't get what they deserve. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, of course, of course. But but since she's a good spin doctor, she point like placed all the blame on Jesse. Yeah, you can blame Jesse for a few things. Sure. A few cringe things that people get annoyed by. But really, turning an entire crowd against him because he left your ass? Because Girl. He, Jay, he did the same thing. Jay fans, thing. I'm gonna need your help. Fuck you, you victim-playing <laughs> bitch. Turning yes. your audience yeah. against me. Ah, oh, shit. I, I, I'm fucking projecting. Fucking projecting. Oh, God, 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 God. No. And also, I'm sorry. Uh, folks at home, you, you can't see m my face. <laughs> I am so irritated that I'm going into full Whoa. white girl talking with their hands. Listen, I'm, I'm talking with my hands. Gentlemen, before we go on, uh -huh. before we go on, before we get to oh. our hand, I'm sorry. you want to maybe go down reality TV street, visit a certain uh, person, Ah, uh, wait. God, uh, what, what, where's the starting with an M. Where's the segue going? Where are we Moore? going? Huh? Oh, more garbage. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, oh, 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 we forgot to mention like the one of the most important plot lines of this fucking oh. uh, the fucking two seasons. We completely skipped over it because we got fucking wrapped oh, up yeah. in negative rants. Uh, Phil Coulson is Sophie's oh, dad. Fine. Holy shit. Um. That, Brian, that was amazing. Love, thank you. Thank you for thank saving you. us from spiraling into <laughs> anger-induced panic attacks. Uh, again, <laughs> I mean, That's audio welcome. people, I'm sure you could you could hear in the tem timber of our voices that we were on the edge of a break. But uh, video people, yep. at least on my end, you can definitely see it. <laughs> yes, yes, but uh, yeah, <sighs> Phil Coulson as her dad. She hit, Perfect. Yeah, casting. she hit the fucking TV parent lottery with that one. Also, also I gotta uh, say it, Sophie's mom has got it going on. Like, I, oh yeah, I do not blame. Should... I do not blame I... Sid. I do not blame young Sid for you know, you know, doing his business. Um, oh, R.I.P. Slim know, Shady. You know yes. who that is, right? Her mom? No, I don't. She's been on several things. Uh, she was on a two and a half minutes. She was big on Criminal Minds. Uh, oh! And uh, the thing that you'd recognize her most from, Jay. Okay. Is Della Duck. Oh, oh my God. Oh, shit. Oh, oh. shit. Yo, that's so cool. Oh, by the way, gentlemen, I forgot to even mention this when we were talking about Sid. Do you know what his actual name is? Siddhartha, yeah. I thought that's cool. Oh, yeah, it's cool as fuck. It is. Like, I, I, and I also yeah. love that, like, you know, uh, like, his friends use it occasionally. Like, Charlie, especially. Siddhartha, please. Uh -huh. Yes. We're not going yeah. to gr we're not going to grow into that to the you know the creepy old guy at the bar. We're clearly going to grow up into Robert. Which, yes. and I uh, and I like where he tried to give Ellen like a full name, and then mm -hmm. he's like, "No, it's just Ellen." Eleanor. Yeah, Eleanor. Oh, Eleanor. Just, no, it's just Ellen. Oh, really? Oh, how, that's drab. How quaint. No, it's how drab. Yeah. Oh, how drab. Drab. Uh, yeah, because he wanted to call everyone. Pro uh, like what? long multi syllabic names. Yes, fantastic. But now let us play the fun game of speculation stations. All Ooh. right. Uh, we but, are going uh, to transform from the Channel Chasers podcast to the Maury Povich podcast, How I Met Your Father edition. So uh, I'm going to start off. In the case of Sophie's 
unnamed and unseen future son. Ian, you are the father. Oh. That's okay. where, that's where I'm going with this because I I had I had a lot of uh I I I did a lot of like analysis and put my psych brain to work here. Uh cuz like I paid attention to a lot of little quirks cuz the thing with psych is you learn to like really people watch and with yeah. the future son, right? Uh, since I couldn't um. see him what I paid attention to was speech pattern and cadence, how he talked. And then every time Ian showed, like with every character, with every male character that was a possible candidate, I listened to how they talked. And then, you know, I, you know at first I wrote Ian off because I was like, oh, he's not going to show up again. Oh, he showed up, but, uh, you know, he's he's with another girl. And then, like, you know, with the Valentine's thing, he, he's there. And she mentioned that, you know, your, your dad loves Valentine's Day. And then, like, I was like, okay, that might be a thing. So I went back. I, uh, I, I like, watched the Ian scenes. I paid close attention to how Ian talks. And this isn't like a 100% verifiable method, but I feel like his speech patterns are very, very similar. So I think Ian is going to be the father. Also, they don't show the son because I think it would be too obvious who the father is if they did. Yep. Because now, I you think see, it's Ian. You see, similar reasons, the similar reasons, but different person. Okay, interesting. All right, for Brian, me. it's Mori time. Go for it. In the case of Sophie's unnamed child, Sid, you are the father. Ooh. Okay, I didn't I, see that one coming. I, I think so. Yeah, right. I I think so because like it's not like obvious, but they do have like small moments together. Oh yeah, especially like, yeah. even the, like in the, the hot, first episode. The, the hot dog pop up, the fact that they both really 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 believe in love. Oh yeah, no, now, now that you actually like bring it up as a possibility, I I totally see like little bits. Yeah, no no. Like it's not crazy at all. It's just I didn't see that coming. Yeah, and like you said, Jay, if Sid was the father, if they showed the son, it would be yeah obvious, obvious yeah mhm mm that's yeah no i but kudos brian I, that that's actually a really really solid like paternal uh, paternity test theory all right uh -huh. tony uh -huh. it's mori time uh, in the case of sophie thompson's unnamed son drew you are the father Ooh, okay. The dark horse cringe. Interesting. The dark horse cringe candidate. All right. Oh, interesting. Me to... When I, I just kind of feel like out of multiple prime candidates who also said that they loved Valentine's Day, Drew did. Mm hmm. Uh, who kind of explained to who also needs a little bit of help rebuilding themselves? Drew does. Yeah. So does so. Mm hmm. And I know it would have been a terrible idea, but why not have a moment of true reconciliation between the two? And maybe. They can try again and try to bring out the best out of each other. See, here's here's my issue with that. And, you know, this could yeah. be fixed in later seasons. But mm -hmm. Drew is too damn desperate to make sense. Fair. And that's an mm -hmm. excellent point because Drew or Ian for me, so. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, 
throw Drew out there as kind of a possibility, you mm -hmm. know? Just to... No, I yeah. get it. I'm glad, I'm glad we each threw out different candidates. Also, yeah. just one other thing for the, uh, for the Sid, mm -hmm. which I meant to say, but I pressed the wrong button. All good. Uh, um, it would be more messy, because he's best friend. Yep. Yep. Yeah. To the True. first guy that she falls for. Yep. But, yep. but, you know, I think, uh, but also to kind of also help with your point, like it actually makes a lot of sense if, you know, like I, t like you and I talked about, they're both terrible for each other. He cares about both. So it would make sense that he consoles both. And in consoling Sophie, he could, him and Sophie could, you know, develop a thing. Also, yeah, and I could... also, um, also, pure speculation, not saying this is ever going to happen, but you said that Sophie, uh, that Sophie is going to have to go down bad where nobody can help her. Mm -hmm. What if it's kind of a similar thing to um, another show that we covered, Help Exo Kitty? Mm hmm. Where she starts to develop the feelings while still with Jesse. Oh, I like oh. this. I like it so, a lot. And so then she's truly alone and has to pick herself up by herself. That's super spicy. Yep. I'm into it. I'm into okay. it. Okay. I, I see you. I see you. Also, just to kind of throw in an interesting little Drew point. Since Drew is a wild card, like like Charlie, mm -hmm. so it would be very interesting to have a Sophie that is kind of in a pseudo conflict with her bestie, where she really feels alone and she actually needs someone to confide in. Which you know what, uh, <laughs> I'm just kind of rescinding Drew, just for now for me. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I mean either Sid and Ian, because both of you have made compelling points. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I, I want to throw, I want to throw out like a side, like a side prediction. Uh, and this is not yeah. one that I want to happen per se, but I could totally see it because of stuff that like has been set up in the background. Yeah. And I'm not saying like, this is going to redeem the character because this is a character we throw, we threw a fuck you at, but, uh, if we're, if they're going to do anything with Drew, I could see Drew being the one to help Hannah redeem herself. And in uh, like and in doing so, he and Hannah, who have been friends for a very long time, just about the same time as Sid, maybe even longer, like actually fall in love because man they have real real good chemistry those two like i could see honest, that being a thing yeah i, I see it too i could see it but also i want to point out something else mm -hmm. that uh i kind of forgot until somebody else pointed it out to me okay there is still a possibility of another person out there that we haven't seen yet yeah, fair. because because True. um the whole entire thing is um they've already done it before with Drew because if you remember Drew was there in the beginning but he wasn't in the pilot. Yep, they retroactively put him there. Yep. So they could do it again uh -huh. with another character. Fair. <laughs> yeah. On there. And. Yep. Now that like now that now that now this is uh this is very good, I I, I like it. I I like all these possibilities. Boy, this is gonna be a behemoth of an episode. And salute mm -hmm. to all of you, true fucking channel chasers listeners out there. Like you guys are f fucking legends. Thank mm -hmm. you for sitting through our impromptu therapy session. Uh, hopefully this helped you all too. Just know, you know, you're never alone. There are people out there who are going through yeah. a lot of the same things you are. 
You just gotta yep. find and it. Just because, and just because I, some of my issues weren't brought up in this show doesn't mean that I don't have my own issues. Yep. I mean, mm-hmm. look, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to get all parasocial here, but like, you know, we are very candid people. Like, honestly, if you guys just kind of mm-hmm. want to vent in this particular comment section just how much you related to, you know, Sophie and the gang, feel free. There will be no judgment, you know. Like, and and if anybody like replies in a judgmental way to your comment, we will make sure to to, uh, to delete them and reprimand them about doing, uh, you know, doing such. Like this has gone on for far too long, but I could tell you about how uh, things with Val and Jesse and Sophie, honestly, kind of parallel some stuff for me. But we've already gotten into so much personal stuff as is uh... that I just let these guys vent. Man, and we both needed it. Thank you, Brian. Uh, and, yeah. and and thank you for pulling us back too, because man, that that mer- that yeah. Meredith shit really almost got me. I oh thought, no, I could see it. I I, could I, see I it. thought I was over it. I and I, but man, it came back. It came <laughs> back real strong. Mm-hmm. And and this time. When I was just going into my own bouts of madness, Jay couldn't there see it. Say, yep. couldn't see it, but I could hear it. Yep. No. Yeah. No. I. That, that's what. That's what. That, that's why I explained the Sophie thing very calmly because I was like, "All right, he might. He just might not get it." And so I was like, "I can. I can hear that he's hurt. Let me. Let me. Let me try. Let me try and break this down." And uh, I'm glad yeah. I was able. I'm glad I was able to get that across. Yes, but that's the it, thing about the show is that it's very real, which makes mm-hmm. it, which helps with the quality. And I mean, and that's the thing, and also that's just the thing about friendship, and that's one of the things that uh, you know did annoy me about this show. But I mean, that's just kind of like it comes with the territory with sitcom, so you can't really do anything about it. the mm-hmm. The key to a good friendship and relationship in general is communication. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, Tony, Tony, like vehemently at first disagreed with, you know, the whole Sophie Jesse thing. But you know, once you come, once me and Brian communicated it properly, Tony was able to understand. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all about communication, folks. Uh, if there's yeah. any mm-hmm. lesson you take away from this gargantuan ass fucking episode and god help you tony <laughs> huh. you're going to have a lot of work to do my friend and i wonder yeah. how long this is going to take to render yeah uh sorry sorry yeah. cassandra sorry future tony apologizing to you in advance uh but thank you folks for sticking around if you did and if you didn't i don't blame you <laughs> yes because the the things we talked about in this episode, by God, <laughs> yeah, overshare much, like, and yeah, we did, but like, it's because this show, like, I've never had a show actually. This is going to sound super fucking corny. I never had a show get me this much. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> Like, <laughs> this show literally felt like it was speaking directly to me. <laughs> and I was like, show? Shut up. I'm not ready to deal with that yet. Stop it. I I, I thought I was ready, but I was... I was, I, was, I was clearly wrong. This podcast showed me that I was wrong. <laughs> uh, clearly. Yeah, and it feels like... It feels like... If we left it and we didn't do it, we could go for another five hours. hundred thousand percent. And that's not just because I'm caffeined up. Uh, but yeah. final thoughts was, and ratings. Fun. Let's go ahead okay. and uh, finally end this bad boy. All right. Brian, we'll start with you. You Because yeah. you, 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 you've been silent and allowed us to vent. So go ahead. Well... Yeah, for me, for me, there were elements here and there that hit, but it didn't hit as hard as you guys. So, 
I could maybe be a little bit more objective. This was a really good show, but it did have its like flaws here and there. Like the will they, won't they went for maybe a little bit too long. They focused more on certain characters than they shouldn't have. Uh, but it did have some good stuff going for it. Like some really good running gags. Like, a, I want to see Flubber the musical. Right? <laughs> Who the fuck Hell does? Yeah. Like, that looks amazing. Yeah. Especially if they have Ida as the blob. Right? That was, yo, shout out, <laughs> shout out to Marion. Like, I know you always talk about Owl House. Watch this show, Marion. Ida yeah. makes a cameo. Like, I, IRL. It's dope. Um, if you're out there yep. listening. Oh, fuck, yep. man. That was great. One of the many great guest stars. Yep. And uh, oh, we didn't they, talk they, about they, it. In sync, man. In sync. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. Like, I, I did not expect to squee. Well, when watching oh, yeah. this show, but I squeed. I'm not going to lie to you. And I, and I like how they kind of, in a way, subverted expectations, but then subverted them again. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> and the fact that, like, Lance was like, man, you know, I already asked my husband, and she, you know, he okay that she could be my hall pass. And I was like, and her eyes was just like, ah! And, uh, you know, yeah. like, oh man. Yeah, and uh, Swish, a couple episodes guest stars, felt bad for him, but also really liked he was, the subversion. He, he was absolutely adorable. Yeah, I love the subversion. I loved, uh, I loved Mr. Morales's uh, fucking, his, his just fucking heartbroken. You know, yes. and, also, and, Angie's talk- all Angie's all understanding. I know her name isn't Angie, but yeah. Angie's all understanding. Meanwhile, Mister Morales is just ha- head hanging low. I wanted you to marry exactly Swish. Give him oh, time. No. To be He'll fair, he, to be fair, his decision making skill is pulled into question when when they had a choice to see uh, Spider Man or Cats. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't trust, I don't trust Mr. Morales. I don't. I don't blame him no. because, like Angie, I wanted to see the cats that he saw in his head. Right. I mean, the cat I saw in my head was also very good and didn't, and didn't, yeah. like, focus on a pointless side character who. You know, only appeared in the actual fucking musical for half a scene. I don't care if she's played by Taylor fucking Swift. But, but back on the, but back sorry, onto the sorry, show. Sorry, also, that, was, uh, that was musical theater, right? My best. Also, um, I believe his name is Kevin Klein or something similar to that. Mm-hmm. The uh, Calvin Klein. No, Calvin Klein is the uh, clothing brand. I believe his name is Kevin Klein. Mm. Uh, the the dude that was Sophie's maybe dad. Yeah. The one oh, that she oh. slept with. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Robert. Robert. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Robert. Robert was he fucking was awesome. I enjoyed him. Yeah. yeah. But in the end, it just, it feels like there are little things here and there. Maybe it's because it's a comedy or something. But in the end, I'm going to go with my gut here. And give it just a flat eight. Interesting. Okay. Actually, Brian, you, I, I'm, I'm gonna go next because you actually gave it a higher score than me, and the tradition continues. So let me go into it. I, as you can see, if you actually manage to, you know, brave this behemoth of a podcast. Uh, this show really resonated with me and I got really passionate at certain parts. Um, and that's just a, you know, a big kudos to how well this show is written, uh, Mm -hmm. and how well the actors portrayed these characters. Uh, however, I did have a lot of major issues. Uh, like Brian mentioned, the will they, won't they 
dragged on for too long. I fucking hate Will They Won't Days. Like I said, this was the straw that broke the camel's back for me in terms of Will They Won't Days. From now on, I will not tolerate them. Fuck that. Um, and the other problems I had, uh, there, I felt even in a binge scenario, there was big pacing issues. Uh, they waited too long for payoffs. Also, mm. in that same token, I feel like there was a lot of wasted opportunities with particular plot lines that were kind of solved a little too quickly for my liking. Like, for example, the Sophie's mom subplot with the fact that, you know, she needs to, yeah. like, Sophie is a fixer and she constantly wants to, you know, fix and help her mom. Uh, as a fixer, it was very frustrating to see, to just see, oh, you know, I'm with Clark Gregg now, so everything's good. Yep. Oh, yeah, we that... were really dating for weeks. And, you know, nothing's happened to blow it up. And then, you know, you know, it inspires Sophie to get with Jesse. I hope, because my my gut and my hope is telling me that it's going to blow up and then that's go that's going to be one of the the major catalysts for Sophie and Jesse to realize that they are not meant for each other at all and mm -hmm. that's when they move on to their next big step so if that happens uh when we cover season 3 uh this critique will be retracted but for now a lot of wasted opportunities there um and also aside from the robin cameo I love Barney. I really do. And I love that, like, they took that, you know, they mixed in the comedy with the m more mature, serious take. But I'll be honest, Barney's cameo felt very hollow and very forced. The Robin one made a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, the Barney one, the Barney one was more injected because he had big daddy issues because no i get it that was like, one no, like, that was one thing that i i didn't mention this before because mm -hmm. we didn't talk about the whole thing with her dad but uh unlike how i met your mother where they strung it out for very long because barney didn't feel like doing it she was like i didn't feel like doing it and the dad was like um hi i saw you on my security camera yeah no i yeah and i, I appreciated that like you know yeah. you know aside from my like pacing issues critique that was not a part of it for sure uh yeah. but like i don't know i i just felt like even though i'm glad the barney thing like helped propel sophie it felt forced like i'm glad i got the closure from barney but like the robin one felt really organic because mm -hmm. you know sophie got curious and wanted to check out the bar you know that they that they never went to that's like upstairs so yeah she, McLaren's. yeah she goes they she ends up in mclaren's and who's there but robin and you know since you know they're, they're they've all been apart and you know they haven't had time to spend together she kind of reminisces on the old days and when she sees this stranger who's in clearly in distress she's like i think that, you know i mean i see a lot of uh, myself in her uh, and uh you know this could be an opportunity for me to like relive my old days it made sense for robin to do what she did and i'm not saying it didn't make sense for barney it really did no uh, but but mm -hmm. i will say now that you're talking about it i feel like the whole barney thing would have improved if it would it didn't go on for so long. Yeah, and if yeah. they uh, didn't foreshadow it. Yeah, um, like mm -hmm. like as much as I love NPH's comedy, if they yeah. had just cut that bit out, even though it was funny, and they had just cut to the Barney Daddy issues, you know, my daughter saved my life talk that he had, it would have been perfect. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you. like, and I, you know, I feel like if, if the right, like that was just the writers trying to give the fan, like have their cake and eat it too, give the fans uh, like, you know, everything that, you know, they think they wanted. But I feel like because Barney had such big growth and development in How I Met Your Mother, showing him still having those like urges and making those jokes mm -hmm. feels like flanderization and regression well that was the yeah. whole thing that people liked about him and robin is robin 
wanted him to be faithful, but she didn't discourage like those jokes, like when they were just yeah. jokes. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I th like if they had cut the bit, like the Barney thing would have been fucking perfect. But like, yeah, the ankle thing. Uh, it, it, I mean, it was funny. I, yes. I I laughed, but it definitely undercut the real message that Barney was trying to give to Sophie. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what bugs me, you know? Yeah. Oof. Like, I, don't know, I hope the other cameos of any of the other OGs, like, are more meaningful like the Robin one. Like, I'll give the Barney one a pass because there were a lot, there were a lot of good parts to it. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, I'm not going to be mad. Although, if you guys have Marshall and Lily sit down and talk to Sid and Hannah about how they can get through this, I am going to scream. I will riot. All right. Okay. Are we done now? Okay, Tony. Uh, uh, oh, final thoughts and ratings. Scores, you didn't say your score. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. 7.5. 7.5. Mm. I, yeah. I, I love the show. I cannot wait for mm -hmm. season three, but so many things just fucking bothered me uh, from a writer's perspective, uh, from mm -hmm. a person perspective, but the things that mm -hmm. hit oh. really hit, and honestly, I needed this show. I'm yeah. glad we covered it when we did. Everything happens mm -hmm. for a reason, and man, yeah. this was necessary. And you made yeah. me feel glad because... In typical us fashion, we didn't really focus on the negatives. So when you give the final score, it seems like maybe, like, and you're the first one doing it, you question whether or not you went too high or too low. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. So, yeah, 7.5. Tony, go ahead. Take us home. Okay. Barring the things that we unpacked in this episode, ah. I agree with you with a lot of the pacing problems, a lot of like storylines that could be, you know, taking a bit longer, had a little bit better payoff, but I can understand why they did the way they did it the way they did. Mm -hmm. Because Makes they sense. didn't uh, really drag something too long because that's a trap that could happen. But you kind of fall into this other side of the coin. And it's still early it's season, so they're I'm sure they're still mm -hmm. just trying to figure shit out. Yeah. Uh cameos worked out, even though I think some bits, especially for Barney's cameo, were long. Like you, Jay. Mm -hmm. Like I Like yeah. I was more critical for Barney's because like that's my boy. Like, that's my favorite character. That was my Sophie before Sophie came along. Yeah. And... I don't know. Just seeing a show that is so connected to my generation, our generation, mm -hmm. brought up a lot of things that Honest to God, I'm terrified of. But, you know, I, I think we can agree, not just because of the length of this podcast, we needed this and we needed to talk about this yes. as content creators and as friends. I honestly feel like after this episode and after you go through the Herculean task of having to edit this and hear this again, uh, it really strengthened our friendship. Like, no exaggeration. I agree, and yeah. in all honesty, this show really put into a perspective of what I mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's all of us yeah. in general. I'm mm -hmm. speaking to us fools here. Yeah, so we handle things yeah. at this point. And sure, do we wish we could do things better? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. Sometimes we have to go through the most ridiculous nonsense in order to be at that point that our parents uh, are at their lives. Also, like, you know, this is going to sound really dumb, like, 
just w without the context and i'll explain mm. afterwards but like a lot of people don't really understand until they get to this stage in their life adult friendships are hard oh yeah yes, and are. like God. you know um and I'm not trying to get all sappy and sentimental because this is the end of the episode and I'm trying to set up for the, the laugh track. Aw. But, like, for real? Um, like, watching this show, talking about it with you guys, really put into perspective just, like, how important my friends are to me. Absolutely. And, like... That means a lot. Again, I'm not trying to go for Indeed. the sentimental laugh track aw. I mean, audience, you can aw while watching this if you want. But, like, you know, none of this is scripted, clearly, because if this was scripted, it wouldn't be this fucking long. Uh, yeah, we're not, uh... 40, but... <laughs> yep. Poor we're kids. not the Russos. Yep. No, and in all honesty... When you go through a lot of things in your romantic life, you see something that brings out similar feelings that you thought you were, uh, you already worked through them. But turns out you didn't. And, yeah. you know, you, you spilled it all over the internet. <laughs> yeah. But oh, perfectly but fine. It, you know what? It was very if if you see big. if you see this, I apologize for attacking you. Uh, you know, uh, unna unnamed woman who caused all that pain. Not to be confused with unnamed woman with the, where, where I have relationship regrets, but unnamed woman who hurt two separate me. women. Yeah, unnamed woman who hurt me. I apologize for attacking you earlier in the episode. Uh, you know. Well, we've moved on to different points in our lives, and you don't deserve that. I apologize. And unnamed women in, that I've dated before, I hope your lives are uh, are doing well. Because, <laughs> in all honesty, it's uh, those feelings in those relationships that led me to. Knowing the woman that I'm that I'm in love with now, and I mean like that the the, that's that's like the great. that's the important part, of, like that honestly I didn't really like it's a corny adage, but I only oh, yeah. really realized like the value of this after talking all this through on this podcast. But like honestly, as much as love sucks and. I hated all the shit that I went through at the time. I I yeah. would 100% do it all over again because you know what? It let it without it, I wouldn't be me right now. And exactly. Yeah. Like and uh, I'd like to think just, I'm a better person for all of that. Just to fill out like the trio, the yeah. former women that I've known, um I do hope that you're good. Especially that one. I hope you uh, got the help that you needed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because more than likely she will actually watch this. Hey, babe. <laughs> I oh. hope that you didn't realize anything traumatic when it comes to your boyfriend there. Also, <laughs> uh, un un unnamed woman whom I have uh, regrets for. Uh, I hope uh, you don't take this the wrong way and think that I, I'm trying to get Brian on my side because I know, you know, you guys are also friends. So, like, you know, I I'm not attacking you. Uh, I, I, I care. Uh, I if you ever want to text me about, like, pretty little liars or some shit, I'm Fine yep. with that. You know, uh, like, you know, we, we, we're still friends. We're cool. Uh, and like, you, you do, you mean a lot to me. And uh, like, I, like I said before, willing to just stick it out. Just like and, that. And uh, I have a tendency of embarrassing myself quite a bit. So look, nah. what do you mean? look, man, this episode, it was my turn. <laughs> Because I legit almost had a meltdown on camera.
I think we all we both almost did, but it's yeah, fine. it's fair. It, it, because yeah, if I was gonna have a meltdown on the internet, I'm glad I had it with my friends around. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you could possibly someday monetize it. Yeah, dude, I oh, hope, no. dude, dude, honestly, like, I hope we come back to this video in like a year and this is one of our like highest viewed videos. I don't care if this oh. video only gets two because I can understand people getting intimidated by this big ass time code. But, oh, yeah. but like, yo, for real, thank you guys for dealing with our bullshit. Yep. I, I really appreciate it. Like, from the bottom of my fucking heart, like, I, yeah, mm -hmm. really. And with that, down to the score, I do enjoy the show, but it brought up a lot of things that just kind of brought up a lot of the memories I thought i was over yeah it was it was super triggered not, not gonna lie <laughs> but on a purely technical level it's a 7.5 i will give it that but just to my core emotionally to the emotional he's still damage, passing yep to the emotional damage that i was put through that i inadvertently put myself through I should say. Which, you know, it, be honestly... Sorry. It's a six. It is a six. <laughs> Emo <laughs> that was a six. Remember, I don't want folks, this is, uh, the six is just emotional Tony talking. The actual score is a 7.5. Yes. Okay. Uh, which, uh, by, by the way, I do think that it's kind of funny. And it does kind of make kind of sense. That the person who had the... Uh, least amount of emotional connection to it gave it a 0.5 higher yep <laughs> and the ones who were triggered like and not in the like buzzword triggered like actually triggered like you can see it there's video evidence uh the people that were triggered <laughs> About, about mm -hmm. uh, like you know the events in said show were the ones who gave it the lower score uh but all because of things that were tangentially related that reminded us of pain of traumatic moments in our individual lives yeah we deal with them at that moment yep yep but i'm but glad I'm hopefully glad we're, next time yeah i'm glad we we're able to deal with them but brian what are the tell the folks at home what we'll be covering in the next episode which will hopefully dear god i hope Will I be hope. a normal length episode. Well, in our first, in a first for us, at least in this version with Tony, we are going to cover a show that uh, is not like really relevant right now, but it's still somewhat recent. We're going to go back a few months and talk about American born Chinese. A show that, you know, is kind of tradition for us now. Had a trailer we reacted to, and it was so cool that I was like, you know what? Yeah, it's been like months, but I still want to see this show. And I, I don't think Scream Time will do it justice, like if I just talk about it for a short segment. So Well, I mean, it's got the everything everywhere all at once trio. Yep. But and they're the not the leads. And the Shang-Chi director. And Shang-Chi is fucking fantastic. Yep. It is. Yep. So, I'm very excited. And honestly, I need something that I can't connect to directly to just cleanse my palate. Please. And not just the palate, <laughs> but the soul. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, without spoiling, though... There might be a little bit of emotional stuff in the show after that. So a little bit of a palate cleanser before we go. Yep, yep, yep. Once again, I just want to take the time to thank you lovely folks. If any of you, I mean, and I mean any of you, stuck through for mm. all of this. Like, really, thank you. Like, genuinely. Shit. Shit, shit. Oh, Brian has well, I forgot. Else. Okay. Go ahead, Bride. We were supposed to do a comic corner. Uh, it's okay. 
next episode. This one went too long. We could just move it to next week. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. But don't... we didn't forget you. Yeah, comment commenters, we aren't ignoring you. Uh, we just clearly needed yeah. this therapy session. Uh, we... It yeah. was... Uh... It was cathartic. It was a time. It, it was, was a time. It was mad mm -hmm. cathartic. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, thank you to all you troopers out there, all two of you, like that actually stuck through the entirety of this episode. Uh, you are the real ones. We appreciate you with all our heart. And uh, for the rest of you, hopefully we'll see you next time when we have a normal length episode. And this is how I ended the Channel Tasters podcast. <laughs>